Hello, everybody, and welcome to session two of our three-part mini-series of Vests in the Mystery of Hollow Creek. My name is Brianna. I'm going to be the Game Master for this series, um, and I would love to introduce my fantastic players that I have with me. Uh, 
first of all, before we get to that, I would like to give a quick shout out to our sponsors for the initiative order. Um, so first off, Session Zero, awesome D&D inspired streetwear. Um, they are so generous that they have given us a discount code, 15% uh, off orders if you use the code order at checkout. Next up, Norse Foundry. Uh, again, I'm gonna keep saying awesome because really everything our sponsors do is awesome, but really great dice, artisan made dice, uh, gemstone, anything you can think of, they have. So you can get 15% off uh, order there if you use TIO15 at checkout. Roaming player gear, our very own Ray, AKA got DM, um, has an awesome uh, dice tray traveling combination. Uh, you can get 20% off of if you use Carnaby20 at checkout and Mithril Armory, uh, fantastic. Um, they've done the tin 20s for us in the past and have a lot of really great dice products there. Uh, you can get 10% off if you use initiative as a code at checkout. And last but not least, we are very proud to be ambassadors for Jasper's Game Day. If you're not familiar, Jasper's Game Day is an awesome nonprofit organization uh, committed to raising funds for awareness and prevention of suicide through tabletop gaming and community. And if you have any um, any help whatsoever that you need, Jasper's Game Day is 100% here for you, as are um, all of us here at the Initiative Order. So uh, now that I've gotten all of our sponsor stuff out of the way, I would like to introduce our players. Uh, why don't we go ahead and start with the person who is able to join us this session, Fantastic Bo. Why don't you go ahead and tell us who you're going to be playing, where our viewers can find you. Um, go ahead. Hello everyone, my name is Bo, I use they, them pronouns, and I'll be playing Eleanor Easton. Uh, you can find me all over the internet at Dorky Teacher. You can find me on Twitter, uh, Instagram at Dorky Teacher, and then Twitch at just Dorky Teacher, because Dorky Teacher was taken. Um, yeah, I play tabletop RPGs all over the internet. I've been on this channel a few times for some one shots and some charity games and community games. Um, and then you can find me on Mondays on Media Players channel where I just dropped my pen that was in my hair, but it's fine. Um, I'm playing in a game that is uh, an isekai kind of themed game where uh, I will be playing uh, myself. Uh, where I have been essentially Jumanji'd into D&D. &D. Uh, and I've already almost died twice. Well, died once, and then almost died again twice. So there's a lot of drama. Uh, <laughs> uh, other than that, you, on my Twitch channel, I play all sorts of video games and stuff. Yeah, this is running too long. Who's next? Perfect. Thank you so much, Bo. And it wasn't too long at all. No worries. Next up, oh, why don't we go with just how Zoom is organized for me. So this may not follow how everyone is on the screen. Michael. Uh, hello, hello. My name is Michael Sinclair II. I go by Michael Critz everywhere. I am a TTRP, I'm a professional TTRPG performer, and uh, I am a Magic the Gathering personality. Uh, are we talking about things that we're doing soon, or is that going to happen at the end? Because I feel was... free to pitch yourself now too. Hey. Go sure. Uh, so I am also in um, something that recently came out, Tabletop Jocks with Black Nito, Joe Johnson, who's part of the Orville. If you ever watch that show, he's one of the cast members there. He does a whole bunch of legit acting stuff. You might see him on magic stuff. Uh, I am on uh, the recent episode of Tabletop Jocks uh, with for magic stuff, and then also with the D&D stuff with Becca Scott and B. Dave Walters, which was super fun. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and do that. And, uh, and yeah, I'm Faith Forge Kamat at Fae Forge Academy with one of our new cast members, Emily, who uh, has joined us. And I'm in second star on the right with Brie and Emily. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing a magic tournament tomorrow. So if you wanna check out for that, and if we end up dropping early, I have some social education videos that if you want to watch, uh, some of them being, you know, how capitalism destroys radical movements and, you know, all this other stuff. So if you want to get some education from all that type of thing, uh, the other one is Edgelord movies and the men who love them. So, you know, <laughs> if you all want to watch some spicy stuff and watch me break some of that stuff down, go and check that out tomorrow. That's me. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, next up, Em. Hello, hello. I'm Em, or Emily. I'm back again. So glad to be here. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Emily Irv, E M I L Y E R V. Um, and I am also, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the great part about being on shows with Michael and Brie now is that if they go first, they mostly say the things that I'm in. So I have to remember less. Wow. <laughs> 
we collaborate often. Um, but yes, I'm on Second Star of the Right with Brian and Michael, uh, bi-weekly D&D 5e stream. Our next show is in two weeks on Friday. Um, and I'm also the newest member of the Faith Forge Academy, uh, which is a D&D 5e podcast that drops every Friday morn. Um, and I'm here at the Initiative Order quite often now because I love all of you guys. You nice people. That's all. Ah, so sweet, and we love you. Next up, Will. Hello, everybody. I'm Will. I am the lore keeper over at Arclight Court on Instagram and here on Twitch. We work on many different tabletop role playing games as well as creating our own. We worked on a My Hero Academia and Resident Evil one in the past. We have a Power Rangers tabletop role playing game that we worked alongside with Renegade Games that's coming out here the next couple of days, um, as well as a handful of projects I've done and worked alongside with all the wonderful people here at the Initiative Order. You can find me on Instagram at Arclight Court. You can find me here on Twitch at Arclight Court. And you can find me normally here on the Initiative Order with all these wonderful people. And lastly, Jazz. Hi, I'm Jazz. I'm basically a non-entity online, but I am BugBearHug on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and I'm playing Maja, and I now have a shitty wig, and I'm here, and I'm excited. <laughs> Fantastic. And you look amazing. We're so happy to have you here. Well, now that everyone has been introduced, why don't we go ahead I get started with the second episode of The Mystery of Hollow Creek. Perfect. Now, starting out session two of this mystery, this investigation, in our first session, we had four investigators, somewhat tied together, loosely, some not knowing each other at all, all be summoned to the Rose House in the city of London. There they were told of a new investigation that they were needing to assist on. Interesting, unfortunate circumstances in the town of Wolford, about two days north, had resulted in two bodies being found. Now, information, somewhat minor, but still, the group did fairly well at being able to gather a bit of an expectation of what Wolf Lord will have in store for them. They were also advised that a fifth investigator would be joining them, who was just a little bit out of reach at the time. Now, Eleanor Easton, would you please describe your, what you look like? Oh. Um, Eleanor Easton. I'm not going to do the voice. I'm going to describe first, and then we'll figure out the voice as we're going. Um, Eleanor Easton is uh, a much, much older woman. Um, the life that she has lived is very clearly etched on her face. She's lived a life of hardship. Uh, she has not had very much money, but there's also a lot of joy written on her face. She is very slight woman, a thin, uh, aged around 77 years old. And she's wearing a light shirt with a sweater underneath and a shawl on top. Uh, hair somewhat disheveled and various writing implements are shoved into the corners, always clutching a small handbag uh, of some writing to uh, like a notebook or some papers and uh, a pad to write upon and followed by her 
trusty, trusty sidekick, uh, her pet dog. Uh, he is a uh, Irish wolfhound, and his name is Sniffles. And that's one of the most important details for me, honestly. <laughs> Sniffles. I will try to best remember that. Forgive me if I ask for um, everyone's animal companions' names. It seems we have a few of them in this group. We were given the choice to put animals, and I said, of course. Absolutely. And I feel like that's a choice that most people make. It's necessary. But Eleanor, so you had already been uh, called to the town of Wolford. Uh, you'd been a couple days north and logistically it didn't make much sense for you to go all the way down to London only to make your way back up north to a location you could easily meet the rest of the investigating party at. Now, as you arrive in the town of Wolford, it's late afternoon. You were already given word that uh, your residence had been secured at uh, the Wolford Inn. It's a fairly obvious building, one of the first that you'll come across um, as you enter into the town of Wolford. You believe that you should be making a, a somewhat soon introduction with the rest of the group. Is there anything in particular that you would like to do prior to going to the inn? Um, not particularly. Okay. Um, yeah, I would take a look around, see if I noticed anything um, out of place, uh, <laughs> any sign of any you know, um, otherworldly beings around and, you know, write down any notes that I might have in my notebook and take pictures. Understood. So just as a general check, would you make an observation check for me? It's going to be your observation and your empathy. Observation, empathy. So that would be two. And then five. I don't have enough dice out. We're going to do this digitally. Never enough dice. What a problem to have, though. I, I took out five, and I thought that would be enough. All right. So, with seven dice, that is zero successes. Zero successes. Okay. So, as you're entering into the town, having your notebook at your side, jotting some notes of uh, just a reminder of locations of that you might want to visit. You're noticing there's a, it, it's fairly busy out right now, almost a distracting amount. Uh, typically, your your eye might catch onto things a bit better, so you feel a little bit overwhelmed with just the sheer amount of uh, uh, items that you're observing and people. But you do note that the inn, as said before, is one of the first locations that you're going to see on the right hand side of the street. Um, you do notice, you hear the uh, sound of a bell, you would believe is a church bell. Sounds very similar to that. Uh, coming from further in um, to the town. And you're seeing some people walk by, appear to be uh, closing up shops that are a bit, uh, a bit later in the day. Uh, I would take a picture of um, the inn and try to capture as much of the town as possible uh, for later study. Awesome. No check necessary for photography. Uh, you feel as though the composition is exquisite. Perfect. But as you enter into um, the Wolford Inn, you notice that it's, it's very warm on the inside, and there's a decent amount of people that appear to be working and visiting this establishment. Um, a person shortly after you enter does recognize you, waves, uh, says, oh, welcome in, we'll be right with you. And um, some people are kind of nudging past, not meaning to be rude in any sense, but just noticing it's a bit of a narrow entryway. Um, Did somebody actually nudge me? A little bit, yes. Oh, As they were trying sniffles, to walk by. Sniffles um, will growl at that person. Ooh. Um, and I am just going to uh, do a little... And you the watch yourself, young man. And... Uh, the man who was walking by you appears to have like uh, several bags off to his side, a very large leather bag, and he seems to be trying to um, move. He has a very large hunting rifle off to his side that he's not brandishing, just carrying at this time. He goes, oh, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, and he kind of looks down at Sniffles and uh, extends his hand out uh, politely. 
Um, Sniffles would probably accept once I would give him a, a look. Um, and he would kind of give a sniff. His nose is just, just very runny. Like, it's <laughs> very wet, and he probably sneezes at least once or twice. So the sneeze, uh, leaving unwanted moisture on this person's hand, he kind of, uh, flicks off to the side and tries to pet, almost leaving a little bit unintentionally on Sniffles. Um, but he does step off to the side and just uh, apologize and kind of look as though he's waiting to also be helped. Um, you, you don't have to be a brute, dear. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am, I didn't see you. You're a... Uh, uh, he's kind of a bigger fellow, and he looks like he's trying to now occupy less space as he's almost like turning him on himself and going off to the side as much as possible, and also looking at uh, Sniffles. Is there, so at the inn, is there like a, a front desk or, or somewhere that I would check in? Yes, there does appear to be a front desk, maybe 15 feet in front of you. There's someone who's currently standing there. Uh, you see a polite exchange, someone being handed a key, and they start stepping off to the side. Uh, the person standing there, young woman, probably in her late teens, uh, long blonde hair, looks at you and goes, Hi, um, I believe you're next. How can I help you? Oh, hello, dear. Um, my name is Eleanor Easton. Um, I've been asked to come here and... Well, I uh, should be expected. Oh, um, you said it was last of Easton? Easton, yes. Oh, perfect. Um, just one second. And she starts going through some paperwork off to the side. Right, um, the party of, uh, five, five different rooms, um, here. And she grabs a key, uh, starts setting aside for you a small note giving you information on, uh, which room it is, and she hands it off, uh, to you, and says, um, you'll be up in room 14. Oh, um, you wouldn't happen to have, um, some food for my dog here? Food? Oh, oh yes, absolutely, I can make sure we have something brought up. Oh, yes, thank you so much. And, and a few extra pillows. Extra pillows? Oh, not yes, a problem. Yes, my, my back, you see, it's, it's very sore. And she has a, a very all. polite smile. She's, I understand. We can definitely have some brought up. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Of course. Just... Um, do you need any help with your bags or anything? Oh, um, yes, if, if you wouldn't mind. Um, oh. It is up those stairs mm -hmm. there yes just off to and she'll point off to what will be your left hand side um she goes over uh you see a door off to her left that swings uh both directions she knocks on it lightly she goes thomas can you help me and a young man comes out and is coming to grab your bags for you oh th thank you so much young man um all right um make my way up these mm -hmm. stairs and Eleanor, as you're walking up the stairs, we're going to cut away for a moment. Now, the rest of our investigating party. Um, it's now late in the day. You had just taken a prior day full of travel up to Lincoln, a night's rest, and have spent the remainder of this day just in the back of a carriage. Richard today has been unusually talkative. Um, I think in the last day he was made a little bit nervous based on some of the interactions. I mean, it seems to be overly polite today um but as you pull up to uh the city or the town of wolford i should say um it comes to a gentle halt and he opens the door for you he says well the inn's right here um do you need any help with any of the any of the bags and he kind of looks over at valario because he had been very uh assertive about carrying them in previously Oh, I'll take mine. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Magnus wants to carry the rest again. I got the rest of them! Uh, and I'm already <laughs> grabbing them. <laughs> Perfect. And he uh, steps off to the side. Um, as previously described, this is one of the first buildings that you see in the town. It seems to be, like, just getting to sunset later in the day. You see some people that are in the nearby shops kind of closing up for the evening. Um, and the warmth and pleasant smells of the inn are beckoning you forward. Um, what is going to be the order of coming into the establishment? Uh, 
<laughs> I'll wait until everybody else uh, goes in to come in with all of the bags. Oh, uh, I was going to wait for everybody as well. <laughs> no worries. I will go first because I'm going to try and scope out the place to see if there's any um, like weak, weak hits, like anyone <laughs> at the bar who... Hey, you know, I gave, mm -hmm. I forgot what I did. I gave money to somebody and um, now I need to like make sure I can afford some money. Or if someone like left food over and like they haven't busted away, like I'm also looking for that. So those, it, those are two things I'm looking at. And because I look so squalor, like I normally I don't look squalor, but I look like someone who you probably wouldn't pay attention to. Uh, I'm going to walk in and um, try and see Ooh, if, okay. uh, you know, I feel like no one would care if I come in, so using that to my benefit before Magnus comes in and starts yelling <laughs> and, you know, taking up space, uh, as it were, I will try <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Got it. So, we're gonna have Casper be entering in first, not for hosp hospitality, but for trying to steal. Um, would you go okay. ahead and make an investigation check for me, Casper? Also... Eleanor or Bo. I saw you say bam and I'm like, what? That's what Magnus do though. They do be taking up that space. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> um, you know, oh, that's not what I roll. Thank God. <laughs> no D&D &D rolls. Thank you. <laughs> Investigation. Let me look at it. We're not playing that game. What is that game? We're playing Vessin. Yeah. It's Vessin time. Uh, it's not that great either. Uh, nope, nothing. No success. No successes? Okay. So, I'm going to say, as you enter into this location, you do see there's a fairly large gentleman in front of you who appears to have almost, like, shrunk off, though, to one side. Mm -hmm. um, he has several large bags, a large leather bag, and he has a hunting rifle uh, being carried next to him. Mm -hmm. And you see he's almost, like, shirking away from this sm uh, smaller woman who's uh, currently speaking with the uh, front desk attendee. Because he's overwhelmed, mm -hmm. he is a soft hit. So what I'm going to do <laughs> is try and bump out, bump into him, mm -hmm. uh, and be like, "Would you watch it?" And I'm gonna like try and like, like bump into him and okay. see if I can, if like he has a finger loose on like a small bag or like <laughs> something on his, you know, inside of his pocket that he's not paying attention. He's overwhelmed. He's overstimulated. I'm here to take a thing. And I'm about to kick the door open, too, which will probably distract him. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. So let's go ahead and have Casper, would you make a stealth check? All right, cool. Your stealth plus precision. Um, and just for just for funsies, uh, Magnus, could you make a, I'm going to say an inspiration check. See okay. exactly what the method of kicking open this door does to this person. No successes. <laughs> no successes, okay. I got one. One success. Okay. Okay, Casper. So as you are entering in, seeing this overwhelmed yet large man um, say, I, I got a sense about him. And you kind of bump into him saying like, oh, wh what are you doing, man? Keep an eye on where you're going. And as he seems to be taken aback by this at first, Magnus forces open the door behind you. It swings very aggressively, like hits the uh, wall next to you. And he's thrown off balance even more, kind of like shocked, looks over, starts leaning to one side. He starts dropping some of the bags to his left. Um, and you do notice that a uh, his wallet falls onto the ground next yep. to you. That's mine now. Uh, just for extra, like because of all the hubbub, I'm going to flick, I'm going to flick uh, Barnab Barnaby. Uh, Barnaby, yes. The pigeon to like ruffle up his feathers in that guy's face just to make sure it's a nice, clean, just a nice, clean wallet take, you know? Okay. Barnaby okay. knows what the flick means. He's been flicked before. <laughs> he understands his role in this. So uh -huh. I would say this previous stealth check would, would have made this a success, anyways. So as uh, the methodical acting of Barnaby fluffing up and Giving this man even more fluster, you very quickly are able to bend down and grab the wallet. Right. He's none the wiser at this point. Right inside this, right here, right, right in that pocket. <laughs> and Eleanor, you do hear the sound of a, a bit of a kerfuffle, if you will, <laughs> behind you. Look over my shoulder and just. Oh, 
youth these days. <laughs> just keep making my way slowly up the stairs, leaning very heavily on that arm at the on the banister. And uh, Valario, uh, Masha, what are you doing? Valario would have been like right behind Casper when he walked in, but where Casper ducked to the right to mess with the big guy, <laughs> Valario would have just gone right to the desk. <laughs> And given the information of uh, the group that is coming in uh, to gather the keys for everybody that is there as they're gathering their bags, and I'll hand them over to everyone as needed. Perfect. And the young woman who's um, helping you at the desk does recognize, oh, you're the remaining of the party. And she says, um, Ms. Easton just checked in. And she will indicate over where Zeldor is starting to head up the stairs, and she starts handing off the keys to you. She's made it up to at this point. <laughs> Valeria will gesture towards Eleanor on the stairs to uh, for the the woman behind the desk and say, mm -hmm. "Is there a way to have my room be across from Madame Easton's? I'm here to assist her on her research and her movement through the cities and make sure that she is safe and taken care of while she's here." Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, that would put you in room 15, actually. And she's, this one was first supposed to be for a Mr. Anderson? Um, yes. If it's okay with him, then, and she kind of looks around, not certain if he won't uh, mind. Mr. Crab or Mr. Anderson is who. He won't mind. We'll get it taken care of. And he'll start, he'll immediately put the key into his own <laughs> breast pocket of his jacket, move with the, the rest of the keys as Magnus kicks the door open doesn't see what Mr. Crab has done and immediately <laughs> tucks the remaining keys in Magnus's breast pocket of his like lumberjack shirt I'm almost <laughs> certain he wears <laughs> and uh, says our fifth is making her way up the stairs I'm gonna make sure she is safe um, and so as you say that Magnus clocks her drops all of the bags on the floor <laughs> immediately um rushes over towards her um and bows really deeply and says madam it is an honor to meet you a fellow countryman and a great contributor to the scottish culture oh um well uh, th 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 thank you Wh who are you Madam, and I uh, take her hand and kiss it very dramatically. Um, and I say, I am Magnus Anderson. If, if you tried to take her hand, she'd pull it back and give you a little smack on the hand. All right. <laughs> I take don't, it. Don't presume. Apologies. Uh, I, it is a great honor to meet you. Uh, if it would not be too much trouble. Uh, and he removes from the satchel, he has a very weathered book. Um, and you'll see that it's actually your book that you've written. Um, oh. And I, I open it, I present it, I say, it was uh, the last thing that uh, my mom gave to me before she passed. She was definitely a number one fan. Oh, and now, now there's a sight. Um, take the book and um, this is a this is one of the first editions, isn't it? I. She was very proud of having it. I haven't seen a copy in a long time. Not not since. Well, it's been a long time. Um, thank you for bringing this. You said your mother gave it to you. I. Oh. I'll just like leaf through a couple pages and then turn it over. And did you did you want me to sign it or I I, I know it seems silly because well she's not here anymore, but somehow <laughs> I think she's throwing a shoe at me from beyond the grave if I don't get your signature on this book. Hey, yeah. Um, what, what's her name? Agnes. Agnes. I'll just pull a pen out of my hair. 
um, and just kind of pop a little quill and get some ink and just sign to Agnes. Never stop looking. Always keep your ears close to the ground. They're always hiding. Just have to know where to look. And just sign Eleanor Easton. Thank you. I I can't express how much this means to me. Um, and apologies for being so presumptuous before. I just I never thought I got the opportunity to meet you. Oh well. <laughs> You know, I've been around. I am often at home writing and taking care of my children. And well, I'm not anymore. My, my grandchildren now. Oh, may I help you with your bags or, or up the stairs, Mum? Oh, um, there was a, a, a boy somewhere. Thomas is standing off to the side with the bags in his hand, kind of uh, awkwardly smiling. Uh, he extends, uh, <laughs> extends the bags over to Magnus cautiously. Uh, I take them <laughs> enthusiastically. <laughs> um, and I offer out, uh, I'm holding them all on one shoulder with one arm, and I offer a hand out to Miss Easton. Oh, uh, you, you go ahead. It'll take me a little bit of time to get up these stairs. Um, leave, leave the camera. I'll, I'll bring that one up. I leave the camera, and I take the bags up the stairs. And... With a little pep in my step, may I say. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Valario, as you had been walking up to Miss Easton, Magnus somewhat intervening, and Thomas awkwardly standing there, kind of looks like, okay, my purpose is served, looks at you, smiles. Uh, can I help you, sir? Oh, everything's quite fine. Other than the bags that that large man seemed to have dropped at the front door. And oh. Valeria is just going to, like, maintain eye con like, making sure that Madame Easton gets up the stairs safely. Um, you can see Sniffles is at the top, kind of pacing back and forth, waiting for her to get up. Um, but motions for... Thomas, if you still wish to have something to do, uh, a great deal of bags were just dropped at the front door. Thomas will follow and uh, pick up the bags and start heading up the stairs following uh, Ms. Easton, not passing by, attempting to be polite. But uh, Casper, you have uh, been back near the uh, entryway now with a wallet in tow that you did not have when you first entered this establishment. Yep. And you do uh, hear footsteps off to your uh, left-hand side of Maja. Maja, what will you be doing in this? In this I'm still outside. Oh. Um, I... Yeah, I'm going to do a circuit, <laughs> make sure everything's all clear, <laughs> scope the town out. Oh. It's a pretty small place. Fairly small, compared, especially compared to a place like London. You would say this is probably about similar to to the town you've come from. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay. Yeah, I just okay. want to make sure there's nobody suspicious on the streets. So I want to do mm -hmm. a full circle of the, the inn. Absolutely. Um, just for flavor, would you give me an investigation check, please? Yeah. One success. Perfect. So, as you start doing a, uh, just to clarify, are you uh, essentially doing a lap around the building, also just keeping an eye on the streets? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, you do notice that um, Richard has uh, pulled the carriage up to an area where he's uh, unhooking the horses, taking them off to a local stable, um, making sure that they're cared for. He appears to be uh, tired at this point, but um, still good spirits. As you're walking around the, I would say, the eastern side of the building, you're noticing there's some people who were, uh, they appear to have been walking uh, towards you. 
not necessarily making eye contact with you, talking uh, in somewhat hushed tones as though they're having a private conversation. You hear a little bit of a mention of um, concern over some of the livestock nearby. Um, that's about all you get for that conversation. But walking around, the perimeter looks secure. It looked like this establishment's well taken care of. Um, very nice landscaping. And aside from some of the local stores that appear to have been closed up, you do hear as though uh, further into town, there appears to be some activity of a light nightlife. Okay. Uh, yeah, if there's nothing immediately dangerous, I'll circle back around, let Pierogi do his business, and then head inside. Perfect. At the point where, Maja, you're entering, um, you would have missed most of the uh, occurrences of petty theft and baggage dropping. So... <laughs> Uh, you do see that there appears to now be a fifth individual being helped up the stairs you're not familiar with, um, though being followed by Valario. Um, Magnus is not in sight at this point, and Casper is appearing to be... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Casper, would you be also starting to head upstairs, or would you be doing something else? Uh, yes. Um, also, to be clear, I was definitely not trying to steal Eleanor Easton stuff. Like, that... I didn't realize that that person had her stuff, so I was just trying to. And thank you for letting me just take the wallet of the person. That was that was the intent. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go up the stairs, and um, while everyone else is going up the stairs, uh, um, I'll be the last person to go up the stairs. If there's like a, a if there's like a order of movement up the stairs and if i can see that no one is paying attention i'm gonna drop the wallet at like midway up the stairs so the, the person thought they lost their wallet midway up the stairs so they're not looking and asking people where their wallet is got it okay so are you uh deliberately waiting for maja to start heading upstairs she is behind you at this point Masha knows what I do. I'm always <laughs> just, watching. Yeah, I'm never. Gonna, I am gonna <laughs> drop because, like, if anyone's gonna catch it, if it's that's fine. If Maja's the only person to catch, uh, catch me, and Maja knows I probably don't even own a wallet, so like, yeah. That's, uh... Got it. An important question: Is anything missing from the wallet? Whatever is valuable, yes. <laughs> anything that's not valuable is not missing. Okay. Yes, you do notice there is a few bills that you're able to. Swipe okay. from it. Sick. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the room situation. Did we figure out who, like, what rooms? Is it everyone has a single room? Is there people who have to go combine on rooms? What's going on with that? No, you've each been given a room. The Perfect. only alteration to the original setup is a uh, Valario uh, decided to take Magnus's room. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, uh, I will probably be either in the room beside or across from Maja, because we've worked together in the past, so that's probably where I would put myself. And seeing how Magnus initially responded to Madam Easton, I'll swap the keys back over. <laughs> There's more of a sense of passion there. So I'll take the room uh, alongside Maja, not across from Maja. Uh, from the conversation I had with a certain being the day before sounds good so as everyone has keys somewhat doled out to the investigators um everyone's able to go ahead put their belongings within their rooms get comfortable um what is the plan moving forward for the evening uh i'm definitely getting some food because i didn't really get any food the days prior so mm -hmm. probably seeing what food i can get um and yeah uh that and having a smoke in my room so that's it okay uh i so i saw the other big man with a gun when i came in yes is he as big as me <laughs> he's, he's probably like an inch shorter okay i gotta know what's up with this guy because <laughs> there can only be one <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, so after I, I get settled and all that, I'm going to go back downstairs in the inn. Is Within the inn, is there a place to eat or drink? 
Yes, there is. So essentially, when you guys were headed off to the left hand side, if you're going to the right hand, there would be an entryway into a, a small area where you're able to get food, drink. It's not the grandest of places, but it makes do. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to go. I want to get a beer in my tankard that I brought from home. Um, and I want to, if this guy is still here, I want to keep eyes on him. Okay, so the man at this point has relocated. He uh, still has multiple bags with him. It appears as though before he's planning on going upstairs, he's getting food and drink galore. So he's over uh, at his table by himself, his belongings kind of strewn about, and he is going to town on drink, food, um, and appears to be more so uh, keeping to himself, not really talking to anyone. Um, I'm going to slide over to the table where he is and slam my tanker down and go, Well, you don't really know how to put it away, don't you, buddy? He looks a little shocked. Um, <laughs> seems to be his default state today. Um, as you show up, he's like, oh, I can say the same about you. And he looks at the tanker, kind of gestures, kind of a polite raising of his glass. Well, I clink mine against his and I go, mm -hmm. cheers. <laughs> cheers. And he uh, starts drinking. Um, I'm sorry, do we know each other? I don't think so, though you look uh, rather familiar. It's almost like looking in a mirror, to be honest. What brings you around these parts? Oh, hunting, mainly. What about you? Hunting as well? Uh, what yeah. you what you looking for in the area? I've, uh, he kind of looks around, uh, very quickly. I've heard that there's a reward for some some big beast that's causing some damage out here. Aye, hey, big game, you say? What kind? Yeah. I don't know, uh... Last I heard, probably... I don't know, could be a wolf? Uh, that's my best guess, personally. Hey, you ever killed a wolf before? Oh, several. I see him, and I cheers him again. <laughs> uh, Are you here for, for the reward? Uh... Uh, respectful competition, of course. Nay, I, uh, I was just passing through and I knew these parts, these woods at least, were good for game. But I didn't know that there was something so big in these woods. I might have to check it out. Where where did you hear about this reward? Oh, a uh, hunting lodge. A uh, town to the east had mentioned it. I was going to check that out in the morning here. There's a hunting lodge here? Yeah. Oh, good to know. I have been a good pal, and I give him a very hearty, aggressive clap on the shoulder, uh, drain my drink in one go, uh, and then I'm going back to my room. I ship it. <laughs> <laughs> and for being a bigger man, uh, the slap on the shoulder almost kind of unsteadies him, like he wasn't expecting it. That was the goal. <laughs> and he looks a little uh, confused at the moment, but it politely raises his glasses and says, have a good night, and continues going back to his food. The real Sigma male move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's see, uh, Valario, what will you be doing this evening? Um, Valario will go down and speak with the, either the barkeep or the woman who is behind the counter, and ask, um, so I'm a, a, a collector of legends, stories, myths. Um, I'm wondering if, is there somebody here within the town who knows old stories of this area? You know, like old secrets, old wives tales. You're muted. Yeah, three, you're muted. I apologize. <laughs> and the girl, uh, Rose at the front counter is looking at you. She's like, oh, old wives' tales? Um, well, I would say my mother, if she were still here. She always had a tale. But, I don't know, I, as silly as it sounds, I know that there's, uh, some superstitious folk, um, that's, uh, anywhere from the church, the hunting lodge, the leather working shop. Um, even the farmers have tales. Do you know of anyone who would keep a collection of these stories? Like a... Ooh. A collection? 
Yes. Um, like someone who's held on to the the stories and the 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 strange tales of the town. Oh. Honestly, no one comes to mind at first glance. But in the business of hospitality, I will I will ask some people. And if I hear anything, I'll let you know. Um, it was uh, Mr. Lorenzano, is that right? Yes. Perfect. If I hear anything, I will, I will tell you. Also, there should be a missive on its way here <laughs> from a, a very dear friend of mine named Frederica. Okay. It should be coming here within the next few days or so. If I'm still here, I'll greatly appreciate it. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Thank you. Looks over at Magnus with his big gulp and decides to take a walk outside. I want to walk as close to the edge of the forest as possible, not going in, but to the edge of it and see if there are any immediate markings, like anything carved onto the trees, anything gashed, torn, broken, uh, just towards the edge of town. Understood. We will come back to that. And for the time being, would you make an investigation check? Absolutely. Perfect. Um, Maja, what are what are your plans for this evening? I was kind of going to do the same thing. I'm um, okay. do a kind of a circuit around the edge of town mm -hmm. and maybe get hunt something for dinner. Ooh, okay, if I absolutely. See something. Yeah, so I'm going to say, why don't you go ahead and also an investigation check for this. Um, and I believe, if I recall correctly, you had a talent that would allow for certain checks if you're hunting prey, correct? I think so. I think that's from um, Pierogi. Oh, Pierogi, okay. Is Pierogi yeah. assisting? Yes, of okay. course. Okay, perfect. So, um, also remember to factor in uh, pierogi's uh, bonus to your check as well for this, then. Yes, I got one success. One success? Fantastic. Six dice, two success for two me. Two successes. Perfect. So, um, I would say, Maja, as you're starting to kind of uh, do a perimeter check of this town, you're almost surprised by how spread out the town is. Um, there seems to be a decent number of people who are still up walking around, interacting with one another. Um, you're able to get to the edge of the town where you're kind of seeing the forest line. And while you're doing around and kind of heading in a little bit to look for essentially for dinner, is there a particular type of uh, type of prey that you're looking for? Something small, small. Um, like rabbit or something. Perfect. So I would say uh, you are able with that investigation check um, and Pierogi's assistance, uh, Pierogi starts uh, kind of pointing in a specific direction as though they've spotted. Are you going to attempt to be utilizing Pierogi or are you going to be using ranged combat? I think ranged combat. Pierogi just kind yeah. of seek it out. Perfect. So why don't you go ahead and make a ranged combat check for me? Oh boy. Okay. Dang. First range, first combat of those. I was shooting something. <laughs> Stop blasting. One success. Perfect. And practiced aim. You're able to, just as the rabbit gets a little bit spooked, fast enough shot, hit it square. Cool. I, I gather it up. Um, is it a is it enough for a meal for me? Yeah, it's a sizable rabbit. Uh, a chonky boy, if you will. Cool. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll loop it onto pierogies. Um, Kind of sack, um, and then I'll just keep doing a perimeter around the town. I kind of want to keep an eye out for tracks, look at the forest specifically. Absolutely. And Valerio, with the two successes, as you were uh, kind of looking around the perimeter as well, going to the forest line, um, that success, the additional success, would about halfway into your journey, you do hear the sound of gunfire fairly close to you. I'm just going to pause and wait to see if there's any, like, follow-up sounds, natural or unnatural, mm -hmm. to the 
uh, gunshot. It doesn't seem like there's any type of like retaliatory fire. You do hear uh, the sound of footsteps nearby, and uh, it appears to be footsteps from an animal as well. Okay. Then he'll just continue on noting the direction that the the sound came from and the direction that the animal he's hearing is moving in. Um, he's really looking for any of these like old Woden or like magical markings that he had read about or had seen and see if any of them are growing like if the bark is showing any of these markings or if somebody's intentionally carved them into a tree or something um, as he's walking around the area. Understood. So, um, as a side note, as you're walking past and keeping kind of an eye on uh, an ear open for uh, sounds of activity from the area of the gunfire, um, just as a question, Maja, are you attempting to remain concealed or are you just going Always. about your way? Always? Okay. So, just for flavor, would you make a stealth check for me and an observation check from Valario? Or I apologize, a vigilance check from Valario. Uh, it's a very check heavy first half of the session. I wasn't expecting that. One success. Wow, I rolled seven dice and no success. Okay, so Maja, I would say not necessarily your footing, but maybe the footing of pierogi uh, does give you away. As you're walking out with a fresh catch, uh, Valeria, you do see, you recognize Maja and pierogi. Uh, you would guess, given the rabbit now with them, uh, that she was the source of the gunfire. Everything okay? Yes, and I gesture to the rabbit. Oh. What are you doing out here? Looking for old magic. The things that I was reading on at the Rose House. Old magic is old magic. Not. My magic isn't old. The one who gave it to me is. The magic that may be here may be old, but whoever is using it now may not be. These might be fresh. This might be newly cursed or marked. That's my fear. Why? Why do you fear this? There is a naivety a pension for mistakes for those new to magic and that may be what caused two people to die i would just say that it's applicable to all who use magic if not instructed or taught correctly valerio just kind of smiles towards her the same two coins in his hand again I do not think it can be. I'm going to just walk past. It doesn't stop you, but he's going, uh, Valario will keep an eye out to make sure that nobody does try to follow Maja in any capacity. I think Pierogi doesn't share my like aloofness. Pierogi like goes around your ankles. And give him the scritches behind the ears. And then as he, as Maja gets a, a little bit away, I'll just kind of like motion towards you or towards Maja. And as Maja's uh, heading away, you're fairly certain keeping an eye out. You see nobody other than Pierogi following at this time. Um, with that second success that you'd had for investigation as you're checking along the forest line, something catches your eye. Uh, it seems to be on the north side of the town. Uh, a small clearing that's easy to be uh, stepped into. It's not too far into the forest, but you do notice a very distinct circle. Small mushrooms. Take 
quick note of it. Um, I'm going to try and find, is there like a, uh, a crescent tree, something that's fallen over there recently that I can use to block off, like walking towards the path that if something does try to move in that direction, I can see that I had to cross over this. Oh, so you're wanting to do like a makeshift blockade? Yeah. Understood. I would say, well, you're not seeing a downed tree anywhere. You could easily take some of the lower hanging branches, snap them off, and try to do a makeshift uh, delineation, if you will. Oh, yeah. I'll take like two or three of them and push them into the, the like softer soil that's there so that if something does walk through there, it'll snap it. And I'll at least be aware that something walked through the area and what way it walked through, either towards the circle or away from it. Got it. And then I'll make my way back towards the inn. Perfect. Eleanor, what are your plans for this evening? Um, once Eleanor makes her way to her room, uh, she's going to start unpacking the things that she brought. Um, is there a desk in the room? Yes, there is a small, very uh, unassuming desk. Uh, then she would um, set up her things, uh, you know, put out a, an inkwell and a pen and a stack of papers to write on uh, and begin kind of writing out almost like the first drafts of a story uh, the opening to an adventure of some kind um, and kind of pulling from details from the day uh, and the people that she's kind of seen in passing to describe these people who are arriving uh, at this inn in this small town um, to investigate some thing um, and then once she's done that, um, she would go and set up those extra pillows, uh, not on her bed, but on the ground at the foot of her bed, um, uh, and get, uh, Sniffles to go and sleep on those pillows. Um, and then is there some kind of armchair in the room? Yes, it's small. Um, probably not the most comfortable, but it doesn't struggle. Uh, she would set it up by any sort of window that is in the room, um, and st just sit and watch, kind of lean back in the chair, and then reach into her bag and pull out a small flask and just screw off the top, take a sip of her flask and watch the people go by. Just observing. And as the night starts to kind of carry on, maybe a few more sips from that flask, uh, she'll pull out a small necklace that's around her neck and, you know, start looking, looking at it, and playing with the small thimble. It's now worn down, heavily, heavily worn down. Perfect. And... Casper, I know there was a mention of food, drink, bed. Is there anything else? Uh, food, drink, smoke, bed. Uh, Perfect. no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open, I'm gonna open the, uh, I'm gonna open the window if there's a window in the room, and uh, I'm going to lean my chair up against that at an angle so it can just like be fully leaned over. Um, and I'm just going to lay my, I'm going to, I'm going to sit in that chair in, in that lean position. And I'm just going to like lean my head, uh, out of the window and kind of just listen to like the nighttime noises of this place is called, dang it. Wolford. Wolford. That's right. Uh, so I'm going to listen to the town of Wolford, just kind of hear the stirrings around if I pick up on anything interesting. If not, then it's kind of just like, you know, lo-fi ASMR vibes to <laughs> fall asleep too. And then once I get more drowsy, I'll probably just stumble into bed, uh, 
leave the door or leave the window halfway open in case um, Barnaby wants to go out and like hit up the roofs or do whatever Barnaby does because I'm not the most entertaining person in the world sometimes uh, being Casper and uh, yeah I'm just gonna enjoy a nice quiet night um, and not be up to any shenanigans because that's not usually what I do so yep <laughs> perfect um, just for flavor could you make a vigilance check Sure. To see what exactly you're getting from the night sounds of Wolford. From Wolford Lo-Fi? Okay, let me see. Coming soon to YouTube. Nice. There'd be a bit, there'd be like ghosts and spooky noises too. You know, there is no spooky lo-fi. Can we get some we get some goddamn spooky yes, lo-fi? There is spooky there absolutely. lo-fi. I haven't found it. Sorry. I shouldn't have said I'll that. Send, of course it exists. We're gonna I'll send, send it you some you. links. I'll, I'll send you some. Will, yeah, we'll send you all the links. <laughs> Thank you. I like yeah, that sounds great. As a as a lit Shinati himself, I need some spooky lo-fi. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh one success. Perfect. So um as you hear, uh, I apologize. The pigeon's name once more. You just Barnaby. said it. Barnaby. Barnaby. Thank you. I'm getting all the animals mixed up. Uh, you know, there's Bar- a lot of them. Yeah, Barnaby uh, takes the open window as a good sign. Starts uh, flying out. You hear his the sound of his wings flapping mm-hmm. on past, and as he lands, you hear kind of a little chick, chick, chick on the roof above you. Um, you're hearing doors opening, closing, people laughing in the distance. Um, you hear as though, um, there's a, a strong wind this evening. Uh, you hear kind of the branches hitting the trees that are nearby to the building. But aside from that, it's about all you get. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna... You know, probably wake up, uh, you know, drowsy, and then probably wake up to like my cigarette either running out or like ashing on myself, and then, you know, going to going to bed. Going to bed, you do. Perfect. Agnes, did you go to sleep immediately after your interaction? You mean Eleanor? No, Magnus. Oh, Magnus. Sorry, I thought you said Agnes. I was like, that's my mom's name, uh, which is silly. I realize now in retrospect. Uh, yes, I did go right to sleep after my interaction. <laughs> um, once Valario makes it back, he's just going to write a quick note in his little pocket notebook that he has. Uh, I leave Madame Easton in your care. Can I speak with you in the morning? Just kind of fold it over and because he knows where Magnus's room is at now slides it underneath the door before he makes his way to his own room for the evening. Uh, Magnus is in bed, not asleep. Um, and when the, when the paper, um, he definitely spoons his gun uh, when he's in bed, though. I feel like this is important. Um, and so, so when the paper slides in the door, he's startled, so he aims the gun at the door and then realizes, ah, oh, it's just a little piece of paper. Uh, puts the gun down, goes, picks it up, um, did you sign it from from you? It just Larry? there's like a V at the bottom. Um, yeah, in in a slightly tipsy state, he's like, I have no idea who this is from. Um, but uh, takes it back to the bed, reads it, slips it in the in the novel as sort of a bookmark, um, and goes to bed. Actually, as an aside to. Uh... If anyone is awake, you'll probably hear me coughing a lot when I'm sleeping. Not great coughing, like worrisome. Sounds like I might be hacking up a lung. Got it. And Maja, you had successfully uh, essentially acquired dinner. Um, You're a skilled hunter, I would say, unless you're intending to take it to someone else, you're able to could skin it, process it as needed for dinner. Cool. Is it delicious? It is surprisingly good. Cool. And is there, uh, is there else? anybody else down here while I'm cooking dinner? Uh, are you planning on uh, essentially doing this outside? Probably. Yeah. Unless there's like a situation in the inn where I could do that. You could probably hand it off to someone else, but I'm not certain that they would welcome you into their own kitchen. Nah, I wouldn't trust them with it anyway. Good. 
Yeah, you're able to, you're used to this kind of situation, setting up a small fire. If you already have the necessary tools, I assume you do from traveling in order to have this meal outside with pierogi. Uh, you notice people passing by on the streets if you're slightly off to the side. No one's really uh, concerned, overly concerned with what you're doing. Uh, so I'm just going to keep an eye on the people passing by while I finish my dinner. Um, I'll probably stay up pretty late okay. um, before I finally head in. Perfect. I would say you probably see, most notably right before you head in, there's a couple people that walk by uh, together, a young couple appearing to be enjoying an evening's company. Uh, you see a, a young woman passing by, uh, similar to the person who helped you inside, long blonde hair, doesn't really appear to be too concerned as most are. It seems to be tired and heading home. So after that, you're able to go inside with pierogi and call it a night. But, do I hear, uh, um, sorry, do I hear Casper yes. hacking up along? I would say yes, you definitely do. And anyone who is, uh, I would say those who are slightly inebriated would probably need to make a check for it, but anyone who is awake and about themselves would definitely hear loud coughing. What kind of check? A vigilance check. Not that many dice. <laughs> Some Was the coughing something that I noticed when we were together? Maybe not as bad. <laughs> okay. I did worse. Do this is worse. <laughs> so I would say with that success, Magnus, even in your uh, intoxicated state, you would be able to hear some loud coughing coming from, I believe, a room across and slightly down the hall from you. Um, Maja, you would note, like, uh, Casper just said coughing was familiar, but the extent of this is concerning. I'll send um, Pierogi over to sit outside of his room. Just to sit? Yeah. Okay. So a little Pierogi walks over happily, always listening, and kind of just sits down. Casper, you probably hear this uh, slight uh, sound of a small uh, furry friend running out to your door and then plopping. Um, uh, let me think. Progi is, 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 is it a boy? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a uh, St. Bernard. St. Bernard, that's right. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be <clears throat> coughing, out, obviously, a whole long out. Not a, like, I'm just coughing really loud. I'm just like... Is that you, Pierogi? <clears throat> and he, he whines, <laughs> concernedly. Uh, I guess I'll go open the door and, like, crack it and just be like, <clears throat> See, I'm I'm all right. <laughs> Just um, <clears throat> I'm all right. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's I just look at Progi and like start to I wipe my hand off actually on my jacket first, uh, and then I'll I'll pet Progi. I think he's just gonna stay there and just keep an ear out for if the coughing gets worse. Uh, I will probably have I usually have leftovers for Barnaby as well but I'll get like maybe like a potato chunk or something and give it to um pierogi and oh give, yeah give it another little pet and then um <clears throat> I missed you from last time and uh appreciate you looking after me uh <laughs> Well, good night then. And I'll slowly uh, close the door and get back to bed. Oh, he's like fully sleeping, like on like on top of you. Oh, okay. He's with oh with with okay. He's a cuddly uh, boy. Gotcha. I will. I will also cuddle pierogi and uh, probably my coughing subsides just a bit uh, as as that happens, and we're it's a full-on spooning pierogi, you know, and just, and just saying, you're a good boy, you're, oh, you're such a, 
a good boy. Thank you. And just, just slobber everywhere. Perfect. You know, yeah. that's I'm in my element. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, what's the, what's the uh, thing I am? I am a vagabond, so I'm, I'm a thousand percent <laughs> in my element. <laughs> Moisturized. That's what he's doing. You know, unbothered, doing great. The pierogi treatment. Yes. And as everyone is settling in for the night, I think that's a good chance for us to take a break, a quick 10, 15 minutes. Um, we will be right back. If you're able to uh, just hang out in the chat, we should be back soon for the second half of this episode. Thank you all again so much for watching.
Live. We're like, oh, okay. Now we're live. Hello, <laughs> welcome back, everyone. There is absolutely nothing to be concerned about here. We were all giving each other aggressive compliments. There was a finger gun. Anyways, so yes, welcome back to Vessin, the mystery of Hollow Creek. I'm in danger. <laughs> you all are. Little do you know. But anyways, on that cheerful note. Let's get back into the session. Before we head to, to break, everyone had uh, a few different tasks they were working on individually um, after uh, making the way to this new city or new town and calling it a night, getting some rest, some better rest, some maybe not so good, frequently interrupted by coughing rests. But it is now morning as everyone wakes up. What would everyone like to do? I would like to get some food. Food. Perfect. So, Casper, as you're getting up, um, you do notice that unless you went to close the window, the window is still open. Um, you hear the sounds of uh, activity outside, people moving past. You hear uh, barking of a dog. Um, and you do see that you have Barnaby still here. Yes. Uh, I'm also going to close the door and then, or close the window. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open up my door and then knock on Maja's door because I believe Pierogi's still with me if you left Pierogi with me. All yeah, right. for sure. I'm going to knock on Ma Maja's door. Yeah, I'm you probably open? already awake. Okay. I'm still going to act like you're not and just like knock and just be like, I like I, creepily, I, I like, yeah, I immediately open the door as soon as you knock. <laughs> no shit. I forgot how. Yep, you, you barely forgot. Um, care to this join morning. Me? Yep, uh, you care to join me for some breakfast? Yes. Would you like some leftover rabbit? And I oh. hold up the <laughs> leftover rabbit. My favorite. We could have it with some eggs or some uh, some toast. If you want to get fancy. You know me, uh, always. The fancy uh, beans and toast and such. All right, I'll head down. <laughs> All right. And Masha, you do notice that on Casper, there's some uh, light, what well, you could tell, like drool marks on him from pierogi. <laughs> Bit of blood, my own. Ooh. Do I clock that? 
Mm. I would say, unless unless Casper, you tried to cover it up. I I tried wiping just... it, but it wasn't the best. Yeah, I tried using like a whatever they had in the room. Understood. I would say you notice that there's a discoloration to it. Not natural doesn't appear to be a part of a, the pierogi evidence. Okay. In the morning, let's go over to uh, Miss Eleanor Easton. What are your plans for this morning? Um, Eleanor would probably be up early. Doesn't sleep much nowadays. Uh, would have taken um, Sniffles out for a walk. Um, and then probably set herself up in the lobby downstairs. Um, you know, trying to get a small bite to eat. Um, and looking over her notes from the night before. Uh, kind of like scattered around the table, taking up like an entire table to herself with just notes and a cup of tea over to the side and a half-eaten piece of toast or something. Perfect. And Eleanor, as you're down, uh, essentially taking advantage of the continental breakfast that they have, um, notes kind of scattered about Casper uh, and Maja, uh, you enter and you do see that uh, Ms. Easton is here as well. I don't know if we actually met. No. Or if I saw her, because she was already like going upstairs, right? No. I believe it would just be Casper that is aware. But Pierogi might react to fellow <laughs> dog sniffles. Yes. <laughs> I don't <Or> know. <laughs> at least don't sniffles know would get very excited. There'd be lots of excited sneezes and, you know, whole butt wags. I think Pierogi, like, plays it cool at first, but eventually is totally into it. Um, and as Sniffles tries to, like, pull away, um, I'd call out after him and say, Oh, Sniffles, come, come, come back. Please. No, I, uh, trying to tug on his leash, and it's just not working real well. I'm, I'm going to uh, pull up a seat, like, move a seat aside. You're welcome to join if you like. That way, you don't have to be bothered with trying to make the dog come back and forth if you'd like. Oh, um, I suppose, um, just start gathering up all of the paper that's just been scattered and, like, organizing it somewhat, and then do a little, you know, carry it over to whatever table you've all set up at. Oh, uh, what, what do you got there? What kind of notes do you got? Oh, um, just taking notes on the surrounding town. Um, Byron's planning out a story. I'm sorry, I haven't intru introduced myself. Um, I'm Eleanor Easton. Um, Ms. Eleanor Easton. Is this name familiar? Masha, how about you make a... a learning check? Oh boy, I haven't made one of those. Well, that happens, I'm just gonna introduce myself. Uh, and I'm uh, the very respectable Casper Crab. And I'm going to uh, politely put my hand out just for a shake, if... She grasps it, uh, firmly. Uh, I will, seeing as I know now that that's maybe the last person that's part of the party and, like, we're both the older folks, I'm just gonna do a, a nice, gentle double hand clasp and give it a nice shake. <laughs> Pleasure. And that was a nothing. nothing. Okay, <laughs> so I would say you recognize the name as it had been mentioned, uh, to Valario of the individual he was expecting. But that's the only context is what you recognize the name. Can I see what's on the papers? I'm gonna be nosy. Um, Eleanor, are you making any attempt to hide the papers, or are they pretty much just open to view? All well, I mean, the they're table? they're stacked at this point. They're okay. kind of loosely stacked, but they they are. So you you might be able to catch what's on the front. I would say, uh, what would be on the uh, topmost page, Eleanor? 
Uh, there'd be about five or six scratched out attempts at a title. Um, and um, after that, you, you would very, you would see kind of descriptions of, of people, of places of the, uh, that you know match the description of the town as we as we came into it yesterday. Um, though there's specifics that are embellished. So like the mundane kind of stuff of people just kind of milling about is, is rendered a little bit more fanciful, a little bit more romantic. Um, you know, it was very much just kind of an average gray day. Um, but in this story, apparently it was a beautiful day yesterday and that kind of thing. I think it's very much just dolled up and, and you know, preparing a story. Do I recognize the elements as being, like, here? If Would Eleanor's say... any kind of good writer. <laughs> From Eleanor's description and her uh, very uh, obvious and accepted talent for writing, yes. But as this interaction is occurring, uh, Magnus, Valerio, uh, what are your plans for the morning? So, um, when I wake up, I reread the note and put together <laughs> that it's probably Valerio. <laughs> um, so I get up, grab my gun, pull my boots on, walk across the hall, and give a good manly knock. You knock, the door just kind of opens itself. Uh, Valerio doesn't lock the door <laughs> at all. Uh, good, good morning to you. Sorry to wake you. No, it's, it's, you have one moment. And he gets up out of the bed and on the little, like, nightstand area, small desk, whatever it may be in the room, there's, like, a piece of paper with some kind of drawing on it. And similar to the, the titles of Miss Easton, there's, like, four other drawings that looked like they were like X'd out, like it wasn't correct, like it didn't look right. As Valario gets up and throws his jacket on and like ushers for Magnus to come in. Uh, Magnus sort of peers at what he can see of uh, the drawings, which does any of this look familiar to me? Um. They would have been drawings of the the mushroom circle in the clearing oh. outside of town. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so I, 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 you're beckoning. Take a seat. Uh, so I, I assume you've gotten, you received my message from last night. I apologize for the lateness of it, but you seem. And he's like trying to gather the correct thoughts or the correct words together for what he's he's getting ready to present i went searching along the edge of the wood last night before making my way in and i found a clearing with a ring of mushrooms and i know that this is something important I know that this is a sign of some kind, but I don't know what it is a sign of. I wanted to make sure, and he'll move the paper over towards Magnus. I wanted to make sure that the way that they were laid out and the height, the... I was giving the correct description of it as he moves the paper towards him. Magnus picks up the paper and takes a look at it. I, uh, I don't know much about this sort of thing. When it comes to the woods, it's mostly beasts for me. But this is not what you said in your note. You'd said something about Miss Easton, correct? Yes. My friend. And still trying to gather the, the right verbiage 
My family trains people like me to protect people like Madame Easton. Those who are Thursday's children who see more than we normally do. Let's see possibilities, um, secrets. I, I see now. She's the oracle you said you were looking for. Yes, but I was given a secret just two days ago that there was someone else here that I was meant to protect. And seeing your response and carrying of yourself in a much more refined manner with Madame Easton, I am entrusting you with her safety where I maintain the safety of the other Talking about Maja, aren't you? She does have a bit of that. Ooh, about her. Like she's seeing a ghost when she's looking at you, which is really unsettling, I have to say. I don't like making eye contact with her. Yes. I'm also slightly worried about Mr. Crab. I. Was it him who was coughing up a storm last night? Yes. I was drawing when he was coughing. I'm not 100% certain what it may be, but I do believe that that may be something to keep an eye out for. I, uh... You know, since we're being forthcoming and all that, I do feel like maybe I should tell you this in case his uh, condition worsens, since he doesn't seem to remember it, which is quite odd, to be honest. Um, but a couple years back, uh, I may have accidentally shot him. Valerio takes a small notebook off the paper and writes a quick note in it and then sets the notebook back down on the table. No emotional change either to any of the information you just said. You know, I, I don't know, first of all, who wears all brown and green in the woods during hunting season. Uh, so definitely not my fault, uh, but he was quite sore about it at the time, and I'm honestly kind of surprised he doesn't remember. Um, but <laughs> he's got underlying conditions, is what I'm saying, in the form of a little bit of lead that I pumped into him accidentally. Accidentally. Uh, aye, but he's an old man, you know? He don't take good care of himself. Um... Do you know if lavender would grow wild in this area? Do I know if lavender would grow wild in this area? <laughs> Go ahead and make a learning check. Cool. Uh, learning. Um, again, I'm also well versed in the... Uh, the beasts and animals in certain areas, I don't know much about the flora and fauna. Uh, Valerio's gonna go to his bag and as an occultist, has small bits of incense in his bag. Um, he's going to check to see if Mr. Crab's room is unlocked now. Okay, Mr. Crab, would he lock his room or not? Michael? Sorry, taking down notes and looking at chat one more time. Uh, does Mr. Crab leave his room locked or unlocked? Uh, probably locked because he is a vagabond himself, so... <laughs> I do have a set of lock picks. So um, I will as, try to break as it As a player, in. I'm not contested about you breaking in there if you want to. <laughs> as Valerio gets up to go to uh, Crab's room, I, I sort of grab him by the arm and I say, as it pertains to Miss Easton, well, she's a national treasure, and I will do everything in my power to keep her safe. You have my word. Do you mean it? Aye. 
I swear on my mom's grave. Uh, the ghosts of past, none disrespect to your mother, have rarely an effect on the world today. I need to know that you would swear on your own grave. I. But I do. And I accept. And we'll turn with the lockpicks and immediately get to work on Mr. Crab's room door. Absolutely. Um, go ahead and make a stealth check. You have a plus one bonus because the lockpicks. Alrighty. One success on seven dice. That's all I need. That's all I need. <laughs> and I got it with like four ones, but I got one success. <laughs> nice. The success is all that matters. Uh, so you are able to fairly quickly go ahead and uh, pick the lock. You hear the familiar click, and then you can enter. Um, I'll take whatever. Whatever may be sitting near the end table or small desk that's in the room and set one of the uh, pieces of incense, almost like one of the coned incense on a plate, light it, bring the window down to where there's just a small air like breeze that can make it through and let the incense fill the room to try to kind of clear the air make it more relaxed, more calming in the area so that the next time Mr. Crab goes in there, it might help settle him easier or allow him to relax and go to sleep easier. Uh, you do see, um, you'll probably see bloody cigarette butts, like, uh, and then some, uh, some bloody rags that are, like, next to the bed, like, probably two of them, not, like, soaked with blood or anything like that, but, like, you know, anytime there was blood there, he like folded it and kind of put it to the side and like jammed it kind of in the, I imagine these these beds are like up against the wall. So like jammed it and stuffed it in like the, the in-between space. I would set the, the rags that I did see off to the side of the plate and uh, just a quick note stay calm all will be well and then the same v on the bottom corner of it and set it on top of the napkins that are there and then close and relock the door uh and this whole time magnus has just sort of been standing in the doorway watching you do this with a puzzled expression on his face uh, once the door is locked we'll turn back towards uh magnus and ask do you know of magic, or only of beast? I know something of magic. I'm afraid that it may be in play here. With his illness? Not his illness. I have to see him in order to know I mean with what we're here to look into. Uh, I, uh, well, I figured they wouldn't have sent us unless there was something out of the ordinary. But you, you should know, there are others here hunting whatever this is. Uh, I ran into a fellow last night, on another hunter who's here to take down the beast, so it won't just be us in those woods. Try not to have errant shots. Then. Try not to dress like a tree. Also fair. Uh, Valario will move into his room, change into his clothes for the day, grab his items and necessities, and ask Magnus. Is there anything you fear? And why should I tell you that? So that I know to avoid it. As he was changing, you would have seen those like goetic 
markings almost like tattooed across his body like old latin ancient magic markings anyone who doesn't have a healthy fear of the woods isn't paying attention and he turns quickly on his heel and goes downstairs okay and downstairs um while this interaction is taking place upstairs, probably during the uh, the first part of your discussion over uh, dogs seeing each other and inviting to a table, is there anything else that you would like to discuss prior to Magnus and Valario entering? I mean, I think I'm I'm standing behind Eleanor before I sit down. Um. And I'm going to kind of lean in. What is your purpose here? Witness, child, you've given me a fright. Um, you can sit down. Um, I prefer to stand. Well, um, I've been asked, asked to um, come here and consult. I can take out her notebook and kind of... Um, it was this, um, Ro Rose House. That called for me. Um, not, not really sure what exactly they want me to do. And what do you do? Oh, um... I'm a writer. Um, you, you might have heard of, oh, um, the fair folk um, and where to find them. Um, brownies, behavior, traits, and signs. Um, no. Um, Has she um, um, written anything uh, on tree wives? No. Then, yeah, no, I haven't read any of that. <laughs> um, how, how not to offend the fae? No. Well, they're often treated as children's stories anyway. From what I understand, many animals have died, and two people as well. How does writing help with this? Oh, um... It's a little bit more than writing. Um, I gather the stories of these fey folk and put them to word. Um, people don't believe me. These are true stories. Um, most uh, Fair number of friends gathering these stories. Um, someone uh, very dear to me. I believe you, but what do you have to offer? Well, um, there's a strange thing. Um, when I start writing, if I clear my mind, I can see things, see things, and it's like the world passes through me and tells me where to go. It's how I've gathered so much evidence and gathered these stories over the years. It's like a nudge. Do you see her? See who? And I'm going to look kind of off to my right. Is there someone that I'm supposed to be seeing? Eleanor, you do not see anyone. No. 
there's someone there. A friend I should know of. No. And I will sit down. Interesting. And she'll take out a I just like rip off a sheet of paper and just start furiously writing down. And I laugh cough at that interaction towards the end. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and I'm gonna get some, uh, take the last of the, the, the gravy, the, the gravy on the plate with the last of the toast and scoop it up <laughs> and, and get that in and, and give a little bit. Actually, uh, not all the bread. There's gonna be a, a, enough to give to Barnaby, to Pierogi, and to, I got it, Sniffles. So I'm also sharing. <laughs> Boiled dog. And as the uh, dogs are enjoying the treats uh, from Mr. Crab, you do see that, um, I apologize, I do not remember the order as to which Magnus and Valerio were heading downstairs, but you do see the two. It's um, me first, I believe. Magnus, uh, the very familiar uh, solid footsteps <laughs> you hear coming down the uh, stairs, and then you see a familiar form. Oh, I am starved! What they make for breakfast? Uh, well, this is the special that me and, um, I don't know what happened, but they might have some, well, they do have just a rather good breakfast, so probably uh, help yourself today. I'm making a beeline for the continental breakfast. <laughs> um, and piling a plate up with more eggs than you've ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> um, and then I take a seat um, across from, well, I'm not really sure where people are at the table, but I tried to take a seat across from Miss Eastwood. I say, good morning to you, ma'am. Uh, I trust you slept well. I, as, as much as I do these days, I turn to Casper and I go, You all right? Yeah, um, breakfast is great, but, but yes. You've been hacking up along half the night. Good little hear you. Walls aren't very thick in this place. Oh, um, it's probably just the air that, uh, the air feels different here, so it's probably what it is. I cock an eyebrow and start shoveling eggs into my mouth done some work to help you with that Mr. Crab what do you mean uh, cleared the air specifically where you'll be sleeping just want to make sure you're okay All right. Valeria will nod towards Maja and then look over towards Madame Easton he'll set his cane under his arm and like almost like a like a half bow towards her madame easton i am valario lorenzano i was sent to the rose house to make sure that you're safely and securely watched over while we conduct business here though our kindred friend mr anderson has volunteered as such for the position. Oh. It would be my honor, ma'am. Um, I, um, well, no one's exactly explained to me w what I'm doing here. Would love um, to give you that information, madam. I would like to know as well. As this interaction is taking place, uh, Valario, you feel a uh, light tap on your shoulder. If you turn around to see who it is, you recognize uh, the young woman who was helping you yesterday, Rose. Um, who's, uh, Mr. Lorenzano, I... Uh, Good morning, Madam Rose. Good morning. Um, and she kind of nods to everyone, waves, um, and she says, about what we were discussing yesterday, um, I did some speaking with uh, some acquaintances and they actually brought up a contact that might be worthwhile to you. Wonderful. It'll take that small notebook out and mm -hmm. get ready to write again. Perfect. Um, Mrs. Shaw is probably going to be the best contact. Um, she lives in a, a small cabin on the south side of town. It's maybe about a five-minute walk. I'm, 
actually not working today. I'm happy to uh, show you there. I would love for that. Does it pass by the clearing over towards the north, or is it further inward? Oh, the the clearing to the north, you said? Yes. Oh, that's uh, quite in the opposite direction. Oh, Let's make a walk about it. Okay. Maybe um, show me the rest of the town. Oh, of course. I'm happy to do that. Um, will, uh, will, will everyone be joining? I uh, think it'd be like... good to stretch my legs. Sounds to me like he's trying to have you all on his own. And <laughs> you, you see Rose's face starts uh, going a little bit red. I and... be ashamed of that. I heard the Italians were like that. Kind of nod ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, close my my cigarette like tin foil of the you know mysteriously powerful mints, um, and uh, I was um, thinking that I'd like to probably get a shower before we start for the day because. Well, things are probably going to get messy, I would assume, if we're going to go out and about, so... I'll find you all. I'll find I... out more. Why bother washing if we are going to get messy anyway? Fine, I just thought, like, okay, it's a nice hotel, and I'd like to... Just seems well, like a waste of time. Sure, later. I... Fine. <laughs> just... <laughs> The like first my thing cigarette. she said that hasn't scared the pants off of me. <laughs> nah, don't I mean, worry. What? <laughs> she she grows on you. Uh, and I'm gonna light my cigarette and proceed on with everyone else if everyone else is heading out. Valario's gonna nod towards Maja and like gesture as he's getting ready to leave with Rose to follow the two of them. I will follow at a distance. And, Assuming um, Miss Easton is coming, I will help her out of her chair. Um, scoot it back for her. <laughs> oh, um, Mr. Ma Magnus. Hi, I, ma'am. Um, would you mind running up to my room and um, picking up my camera and um, a small pot of ink? Indeed, ma'am. No. Rush up the stairs. <laughs> There's a good boy. <laughs> and ah. so as uh Valario is leaving, um Eleanor Magnus, are you intending to follow? Uh I'm following if she's following. Yeah, uh at some point she would like try to gather people around. Uh, oh, um, before we go, so, um if you wouldn't mind just gathering close and um She's gonna try to gather everyone to for a group picture. Um, it, it helps for uh, description. My memory is not what it used to be. I'd like to remember your faces. Uh, Hi. It, what kind of camera is it? Is it like a, a black and white, like old time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very old timey. Like you have like the the phosphorus, and you have to like slide it open, hold right. It, and then so no smiles. It. So I try and look because you're not allowed. Uh, and also, I believe the photos took a bit, so I'm just gonna have like the most mean muggish face, but also try and smile through that. Uh, that's that's <laughs> the look I'm going for. Yeah, yeah. Smile yeah. Like eyes. yeah. She just like talk you through it. She's like, don't move. <laughs> yeah. Just I know, and just hold it for like a good ten seconds. <laughs> Ariel follows to a T, but with the low empathy, there is not a smile on his face at all. Uh, we should kind of gather everyone outside, try to get it some good lighting, and you know, get it all set up. <laughs> um, I, I think like right as you're about to take the picture, much is like this is taking too long, and she like walks, so you just catch a blur. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you know. This, the best in RPG, they say not everything has to be accurate. The photos, the photos have to be accurate. Okay? Yeah. Absolutely. That's that's the through line. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
so after the essentially selfie break that we just <laughs> were getting into, I like that it's the seventy-seven year old that's <laughs> taking a selfie. Hey, you know what? Eleanor's forward thinking. We appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, pioneer at heart. What a pioneer. Exactly. Um, if the entire party is following, um, uh, Rose looked to Valeria. Were you wanting to? I'm I'm sorry. Were you wanting to go to the north? You'd mentioned first, and then down to. Is yeah. it shop? Yeah, just want to get a okay. good sight of the entire area. I so still give like a small grin towards Rose. Of course. Yeah. Um, and she'll start uh like making sure everyone's done, packed up with the camera, and start walking um along the road, taking up to the north. Um, kind of going on to the outskirts. She starts pointing out locations to everyone, unless there's a specific direction that you tend to steer her. She'll somewhat follow the road as it goes, um, pointing out, obviously, you'll come across a very obvious large church that's there. Um, She'll point out the uh, Baker General. It's like the general store. She said you could pretty much find anything you need there. Um, Plus, Paul is very kind, a wonderful man. Absolutely recommend doing business with him. Um, Eventually, uh, are you going to be trying to go up to that little uh, clearing in the north? if the walkway permits us to walk past that area mm-hmm. in any way, I'm just trying to get a sight line on where I had set those branches into the mm-hmm. ground to see if they've been snapped towards the walkway or away from the walkway. Understood. Um, I'm going to have you make an investigation check. It's a little bit of a distance, but possible. Are we being shown this uh, ring of mushrooms, or are you kind of like walking us past it? Uh, I would. Magnus would know it's the same drawing that he had seen, that he had been shown that morning. So if Magnus would have relayed the information, you guys would be aware. But Valaria wouldn't have said or made any like, "Oh, this is important. We need to look at this in front of Rose." Uh, yeah, Magnus didn't say anything to the group. Um, two successes. Okay, so two successes is enough. Um, as you're glancing over, you kind of almost, you hear Rose still talking, but focus your attention over to that area that you'd been at the previous night. Um, you do notice that there are the small branches and twigs that you left nearest you um, do appear to be differently set than where it was the prior night. Something doesn't look like it was stepped on. Um, without, um, it, it's probably definitely going to be a stealth. Uh, I'm going to point towards the branched area. Uh, like having a conversation with Rose and then pointing down towards the change for Magnus to see. Uh, and you're trying to conceal this from her? Uh, yeah, like trying to maintain her attention somewhere else while pointing out the area. Are you trying Dude. to hide it from me as yeah. well? No, not from you guys, just specifically from Rose. Got it. I would say if you're not trying to uh, conceal it from the group, I won't say there's a check necessary. You do notice that he's starting to indicate um, to look off to the northern area from where you're standing. Um, however, with a stealth check to hide it from Rose, uh, would you please make a stealth check, Valario? It is going to be contested by her vigilance. One success. One success? She did not have any successes. So as she's speaking, um, you're able to kind of indicate and you don't see, even though she's looking at you and she glances away momentarily, it's in a different direction. She doesn't appear to have noticed what you're indicating. Do I notice this or do I have to make a check? No, I'd say anyone in the party, he wasn't trying to conceal it from you. So yes, you would know. Okay. I follow sort of the line of his finger. Um, and I assume I'm looking for something that would have relevance or meaning to me. Uh, so do I see, um, that <laughs> yeah you see what appears to be like a, a very lightly uh worn walkway heading into the forested area uh you notice that there's a uh, probably something you've seen before as a hunter like twigs set up in a way that they appear to have been disturbed 
Okay. If you look I, a little bit further, you see some mushrooms. I break off uh, and I start heading down the path. Not necessarily sneaking, but not making it a big deal. <laughs> where, where are you going? Uh, nature calls. I'll bear it back. Right. Do we believe that? Oh, okay. So let's see here. How about... After seeing we... the point? I don't believe that. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> I, and I'm also, I'm not really trying to conceal it from them. I'm, I'm making eyes like the, at Rose, like, I'm going to take a whiz. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Subtle. No roll-offs necessary. Um, Rose, given her earlier vigilance check, wouldn't be catching on. She's still muttering on about, like, a local leather worker. So, uh, Magnus, are you heading over in that direction? She doesn't really appear to be taking note of that. She's a bit more speaking still uh, to the remaining group. Um, as you're heading over in that direction, is there anything in particular you're trying to do or are you just observing? Uh, I'm just observing. I'm sort of using my hunter mindset uh, to look because I've seen that the twigs are disturbed. I'm trying to see like, if I can ascertain size. Uh, I'm looking for prints. Um, I'm looking for up in the trees as well to see if there's been anything disturbed up there. Got it. Um, as you are walking and kind of just surveying the immediate area, we'll say you start with the ground. You're most observant of the twigs that have been broken, the somewhat disturbed dirt around it, and just a slight amount of mud from a previous rainy day. Um, you do notice that there are prints there. I am going to have this be a investigation check to see if you can determine what kind of prints. Okay. I slowly break off from the group as well and start heading in that direction. Yeah, I would like to follow. Understood. Ooh, so, um, two I would successes. Say two successes. Fantastic. Maja, Eleanor, if you're also breaking away, I would say you're able to walk and follow in that direction. Are either of you trying to conceal yourselves? Yes. I would also no. uh, give Misha, like, a smoke and also try and, like, banter with <laughs> Misha, like, Oh, that's a fancy leather work over there. Nice. Um, <laughs> do, do, they, do they have nice wallets? And that's all, like, I'm just trying to make sure that she's not distracted. She's Absolutely. distracted by me and not by everyone else. For sure. So I'm going to have, uh, if Maja, you're attempting to be stealthy about this, I'll have you make a stealth check. Um, Casper, as you're assisting, I'll have this be a manipulation check. Um, and Eleanor, forgive me, were you attempting to be stealthy or are you just walking? <laughs> I'm just kind of tr holding back, and then eventually, once they've moved forward a little bit, perfect. Uh, going and rejoining Magnus. Okay. One success. One success. Perfect, Casper. Uh, what am I? What do I need to do? Manipulation. Ah, uh, yes. Where, where's my manipulation? Oh, I I'm rolling just one because it's a it's a zero. Oh. What's your empathy? Y what is your empathy? Mm -hmm. Empathy's at four. Empathy, so okay, so you'll roll both your manipulation die and your empathy die. However, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. Great. Oh, well, it's all about learning. But however, one thing we were doing wrong earlier, you are still suffering a condition. So it will be at a I negative one angry. penalty. Okay. Uh, I'm angrily going to say to Mrs. Shaw, <laughs> uh, you know, they say... Uh, no good leather workers, no good workers, simple as. And then I will roll this. Can't wait for uh, someone to be hopeless. Just, yes, I, I say hopelessly too. Uh, one success. One success? Okay, so with your successful manipulating of the conversation, she'll still roll a vigilance check against the stealth, but she's going to sure. suffer a penalty from it. And there's no successes still. So, Manja, you are fairly certain she's not paying any attention to you walking away even eleanor at this point she's very much involved in a conversation with mr crap about leather workers <laughs> and swearing that this leather worker in town has seen some of the best work that she's seen hunters that have come through have absolutely vouched for it it's a sweet old man dribble that you cannot escape <laughs> I, that's what that's the spell i've put on her you know valeria has been talking about all this old magic i got old magic all day this, <laughs> this old dribble okay <laughs> it's that moment where you're like, 
How did I get into this conversation? How do I, and how do I get out? There is no, there is no. <laughs> Looking around, out. everyone seems to be gone, and you're like, "When did this happen?" <laughs> right. And Magnus, as you are over there, a survey, you had two successes. Was that right on the investigation? Yeah. Okay. So looking into the dirt, some of the areas were a bit not as evident, but as you're going over and looking at the uh, the mud that had been right underneath the twigs, you're fairly certain you're seeing hoof marks. Hoof marks. Yes. I uh, I crouch down uh, to take a look at them. How big are they? Are they bigger than a normal horse? Same size? I'll say they're smaller than a horse, actually. You would expect something of a, a smaller caliber than a horse. Maybe, um, maybe goat, sheep, something of that nature. Interesting. Um, do I see the direction that they came from and that they went towards? They appear to be going towards, like they're coming from the town and towards this uh, area that you're seeing where there is a little mushroom circle. All right. I take note of that and I approach the mushroom circle itself. Mm -hmm. um, what kind uh, of mushrooms if, are they? <laughs> if you look like you're about to cross into it, I'd like to grab you by the Oh, yes. The elbow. Ah, whoa. Oh, uh, pa pardon me. I, di I didn't see you there. Don't cross into the mushrooms. It's a fairy circle. Your mother never told you. I... I, I forgot. Uh, my, my bad. And I have backup. Um, do you, Someone you know who read my books, is? you've certainly not read um, How Not to Offend the Fae. No, no, I don't. I don't think I got around to that one. Do you know any more about this? Well, stories say that these circles are, well, some say portals to the Fey realm, others that they are homes for the Fey. And to go into one and cross it is the utmost disrespect. I so will. I, I don't mean no disrespect. I sort of look at the mushrooms and go, oh, sorry. Uh, in, in the tales of the fate, is there anything about, I don't know, a, a goat, sheep, goat, sheep, monster, something with hooves? None that I'm familiar with, but perhaps if I made some kind of check to, <laughs> <laughs> to see if there's something that me, the player, doesn't actually know about. <laughs> yeah. Understood. Um, so thinking back on Eleanor's history and I can tell you exposure, what books she's written. I wrote those down. <laughs> this is true. Um, I want to check really fast here. I will let you make a learning check on this, Eleanor. Um, however, I am going to say it's going to be at a penalty of one. Okay. Uh, that should be... So that's... Okay. Understood. I understand how this game works. Um... My camera allows me to add learning or add to my learning checks. Can I use that in some way? Like if I've taken pictures of anything that Ooh. fits that would... with the stories might work, you know? That's fair. Um, I would say if you can incorporate your camera into this in some way, yes, I would allow that. Okay. Um, that's a The way that I was thinking, because the way the reason why she has her camera is because she takes pictures to put them in with the books, to kind of try to lend some credibility to the stories that she's writing. Um, so, I 
Yeah. I, I don't want to like try to grab information from you, but I, my idea was like if I've written, because I've literally wrote down just what books you wrote, so if I give you that list, you could tell me whether it's going to work or not. Absolutely. And then that way it's like, I've seen these before, I took a picture of it. That's true. Uh, yeah, what are the, what's the list of books again? Alright, so we have uh, Dragons, Wyverns, and Common Misconceptions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Bog Arts, uh, Misunderstood and Misrepresented. Uh, <laughs> we have The Fair Folk and Where to Find Them. We have ogres, trolls, and other large beings of note. Uh, how not to offend the fae. A treatise on werefolk. Um, procedures on bargaining with fairies. Uh, and then uh, the first book she wrote. Uh, brownies, behaviors, traits, and signs. Okay, so I would say as... Eleanor, if you are... Holding at the camera or, like, touching the camera in any way, and even for a moment setting it down... There is a, a slight memory that that comes to mind just very faintly of a familiar small figure and tales that were told. I will allow you to use that bonus. So, okay, great. So that's a plus two, but then minus one. Yes. Okay, great. I have two successes. Two successes, okay. So, yeah. that's good, because you would need two successes. On certain things, you'll need actually more than one success, and this one was a little bit more difficult. So, I would say that, and of course, this is specific to Eleanor. Please keep that in mind, players. You remember a, a familiar small friend that you had um, talking to you about, you know, stories that they heard about that may have inspired an aspect of your uh, looking into the fair folk. Um, specifically with a, oh, if, I think that if you make a deal with them, sometimes, sometimes you can get powers, but sometimes it goes wrong, or maybe it's a trade-off, like, I don't know, like, you could be like a vetier and get turned into an animal. And that's what you remember. Sorry, I'm writing my notes. Um, well, um, sometimes when you make deals with the Fae, they can... There can be a physical change that accompanies it. You get something, but you're forever changed from it, so... This could be that kind of circumstance. You mean to say that somebody came to make a deal with the Fae and in exchange they were transformed? I could be. Um, I'm going to start following the tracks back to where they came from, from the village, if I can. Bri, I think you're muted. Muted. This one is going to require another check uh, for tracking. So, can this one be an investigation? I actually am going to wave over Maja. Mm. Come here. I jump out of a tree. Look! <laughs> Damn it! Please stop doing that! I saw them. You saw what? The tracks. All right, well, help me track them. Okay, I help. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just to clarify, we currently do have a Valario and Casper over with Rose at this point. <laughs> um, we're trying to keep her preoccupied while half the party has kind of gone off and now tracking something. At some, at some point in time when everybody was gathered over there, I would have, uh, Valario would have said to Rose, well, it seems they're enjoying the air. Enjoying the views. Maybe you could still take me. Oh, yes, of course. Um, Mr. Crab, are you joining? No, I will. Yeah, I suppose I'm probably not quite useful. Uh, well, uh, I have enough air as there is, and 
Yep, a uh, long-winded way of saying I'm joining. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Um, and she starts, uh, glances over at the rest of the group and looks a little confused for a moment, but starts heading, uh, almost uh, going in a roundabout way now, heading slowly towards the east and then to the south along some of the roads. Now, Magnus and Maja, you guys are going to be doing tracking, so I'm going to have an investigation check, um, and I'll have one of you roll for this, but granting a bonus of plus one for an assist by the other person. I have um, a feeling your investigation is probably better than mine. That's pretty good with pierogi. Um, I think I'm at a eight. No, sorry, that's way too much. I was about to say, damn. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> five. I'm at five. Yeah. So good. I'll, I'll assist. Okay, so I get six. Six total. Oh no, I don't get anything. <laughs> okay, so the trail at first seems pretty strong. There's some really good indentation of these like cloven hooves in the ground, like some muddier areas. Then it gets to a patch of grass that doesn't seem to be lending well to the pursuit. You, you've maybe gone a hundred yards to the east, and now you're somewhat near a, you're looking over at a sign of a building for a leather worker, and unfortunately you're feeling like you've lost the trail. Progi's like rolling in the tracks. <laughs> Oi! A mean jump up! Get out of the tracks! He's just enjoying himself. But they just they just kind of drop off. As far as we can tell. As far as you can tell, yes. Uh, Sorry. It's alright. I just don't like this. There's something strange going on. This doesn't... <sighs> Whatever this is... It, it came from the town. The hooves were coming from the town to the circle? Yes, right? That was the... Or at least they were going in that direction? Yeah, it seemed like they were entering from the town more so. You didn't see any tracks from the forest itself. And I saw that they were, like, hooven, right? Yes. Okay. Perhaps we should ask around. I... Well, perhaps we should leave that up to the more, uh... Persuasive of us. I am persuasive. I... Touch my gun. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that! Uh, and I attempt to... So I assume we sort of went like parallel to Valerio and Rose because they were like on the path and we were just sort of in the forest. Um, so I'm going to attempt to rejoin the party farther up. Did you Did you just leave no. Eleanor, by the <laughs> no, way? Because <you're> <laughs> you, you were all were like, let's go! And I was like... <laughs> Actually... Hold on, I go... Oh! Oh, Jesus! Oh! I'll pay her at back, and I run back in the woods to go get Eleanor. <laughs> Eleanor's like making her way back down the road. Apologies, <laughs> mom. Where the she could be piggybacking. <laughs> One job. Just, just you know, Twice just now, actually, <laughs> just like cut, cut, shift over to Eleanor, and it's a big, a big besson just like over her dark and brooding. We've got sniffles. <laughs> with just like eyes. <laughs> Good to have you both. Bye. No. <laughs> Amazing. So, if the group is attempting to move from the unsuccessful tracking back into a meeting with Casper, Valerio, Rose, um, it's easy. You're able to join back up with the group. You're hearing Rose prattling on now about a local uh, restaurant she really likes. Um, she's kind of pointing in a direction that they've just passed. Um, but she looks over, she's like, oh! Hello again. Lovely forest you got here. Really top notch. Uh, yes, it, it, it is quite lovely. <laughs> um, we, we're actually not too far away from Mrs. Shaw's now. It's probably just another two minutes. And she's like, actually, you can see it. And she starts pointing. You see 
a small cabin that's just on the outskirts. Um, and unless anyone's wanting to stop anywhere else first, she's happy to bring you right to the location. And she gets up to the door, she uh, knocks on it, and you hear um, some footsteps and the door opens. You see a small, uh, older woman, graying hair, it's slightly frizzy and some really thick glasses on her face. And she says, oh, hello, how can, how can I help you? How you doing, Madam Shaw? My name is Valario. I am here to learn secrets and stories of your town. Oh, <laughs> secrets and stories, you say? Um, I, I suppose I can help there. Um, I, I, yes. Hello. Um, I'm, I'm Edith. Uh, Edith Shaw. Um, and she kind of looks over towards Rose. There seems to be like a, a familiarity between the two of them, and she shakes her hand and opens the door and says, um, come on in, I'm, I'm sorry about the mess, I wasn't quite expecting company. You see a very large fluffy cat kind of just a standing looking up at everyone. And she senses there's dogs, but seems not too bothered. Uh, Miss Rose had recommended you to me, uh, personally. As far as my understanding, you are the keeper of such stories here. Oh, I, I tend to know tales, I guess you could say. That's wonderful. Uh, I have with us, and he'll turn and gesture towards Eleanor. Uh, this is Madam Eleanor Easton. She is a writer okay. as well. Easton. E Easton, an author, is that right? Yes, I've written a number of stories. <gasps> I, I feel like I've read something of yours. I, I apologize, my memory is n not what it used to be after a certain age, I'm, I'm sure you may understand. Yes, um, might have read it for your children, perhaps, or... More than likely. Uh, my daughter was very much, um, and she starts stepping over, like, please, please come in, I feel rude, but she says, my daughter always enjoyed a good bedtime story. Valario is going to wait at the door for Magnus and Maja as uh, uh, Eleanor and Casper step inside. Did we see anything? Stoves. Stoves. Wait in front. No. Oh, no, you. No, we do the, we, this goes back and forth for a while. <laughs> From town. From the town into the forest. Miss Easton seems to think that. Perhaps somebody made a deal with a fae and suffered consequences. New magic. Valaria looks at Maja. Never a good sign. No. Okay. And then we'll go in uh, as we're... Uh, I feel like at this point, two. Eleanor and... Um, and Edith are like already sitting around a small table. They have a cup of tea ready, and like Eleanor inexplicably, inexplicably has like a blanket around her shoulders, <laughs> and they're like just discussing. <laughs> uh, I will. I'll join them for some tea as well. But I'm sitting on the floor and just letting the cat kind of meander around and over and all the things around me. You don't want. A chair. No, I'm uh, okay. quite comfortable with the, the kitten right here. This, you get down on their level, see what they see at their level. Sometimes it's kind of, it's kind of nice. You should try it sometime. Hmm. Could I make a, is an insight check? Ooh, are you trying to uh, insight towards Mr. Crab? No, uh, sorry, specific. Oh, um, I'm trying to find Mr. the correct skill. <laughs> uh, I guess it would be observation. Okay. Um, the, the, the house itself, um, mm -hmm. and seeing if there's any signs of otherworldly presences, hidden. Oh, okay. Beings, any 
any small folk hiding around the corners. I would say that is an things. observation check. Yeah. So, two plus five. Four, five, six, seven. One success. <laughs> One success. Okay, so with that kind of check, it is a higher difficulty. While you're looking around and you're seeing like a very clean house, despite her saying it was messy, um, which seems a little bit suspicious to you, um, you're not sensing like any type of movement that doesn't have like a seemingly like explicit cause for it and you're not seeing even being a thursday's child you're not seeing a figure that would attempt to hide um i would like to surreptitiously take a sugar cube uh, <laughs> and just place it kind of drop it beside the uh couch so that it kind of tumbles and and is next to the the sofa that we're on or at the table or something, just so that it's, it's on the ground. Oh, Ethan, oh. I come uh, looking specifically for stories uh, and secrets of the most imaginative, the most magical. Um, I've heard of creatures moving through the forest of children laughing through the night and saying that there were friends playing in the rooms with them. I was wondering if there are any any stories or secrets in the town like that here. Then he'll take a small notepad out from his pocket and get ready to start taking notes. And she has a small smile come across her face. There's been many many stories like that here although i feel you'd be a uh, hard pressed to go anywhere and anywhere in the forest and not find that yes but your town your home here came highly recommended for stories when, yes and i believe the wisdom of those who have seen much more time than I have and like will respectfully lend a hand towards Mr. Crab and towards uh, Madam Eleanor and then towards Miss Edith tend to be more open and aware to these kinds of stories. Well, um, she thinks for a moment and without going word by word she does tell you several tales small town tales that you'd heard of or she'd heard of in her many years of creatures that are able to or unable not to change in the moonlight creatures that show up around small uh mushroom circles that lure those in with promises and sometimes deliver to an extent. She knows about men who have come to the town and just felt a calling to the woods and they're not seen again. Uh, Valeria's kept like quick annotative notes of each one of the stories that she's given. Um, there was one, I've only received small bits of information about it. A uh, cloven hoofed creature that, that's been in the area uh it was at some point in time in the past here before it was no longer here for a period of time and as such appeared again is there anything you, you might be able to tell me about something like that and she sits back and you could tell she's thinking and Cloven hooved. I wish I had more help for you, but unfortunately, I I don't have any stories that deal with that. You have been a wonderful help, Adam Edith. I appreciate it very much. 
uh, we will be here in town for a short time, or at least until we've gathered the stories that we are looking for. But I do greatly appreciate it. He'll kind of smile towards her. Uh, move to stand and look over towards uh, Casper, towards Mr. Crab. And make sure that he's okay. Uh, Miss Shaw, a uh, question for you. Um, do any of these young men, do they have any connection? Do they come from uh, any similar line of work or um, have the same kind of troubles or ailments? Uh, uh, the young men who weren't seen again. That's right. Oh, I mean, I can't give specifics. The stories are just that, stories and sometimes somewhat vague, but seems men young and old not really a common common tie fair enough sometimes you know the the desperate all come from the same place like if they're all suddenly out of work or a factory shut down or mm -hmm. they were hired to um do work in the forest so that is uh that is the reasoning for my questioning. But if you have no great answers for that, I guess I will just um, check in with the young men of the town somewhere. That's probably a good, um, a, a good place to start. Lovely tea, by the way. Thank you. Does anyone else in the party have any questions? Uh, do we know what type of town this is? Like, do they have a trade or? It seems like it's actually somewhat well contained. Um, there's a few as you are passing by. Um, there's obviously a hunting lodge that seems well established. There's a very nice uh, option for farms. You've seen two that you've passed by. Um, it doesn't seem to be so much in terms of, like, lumber doesn't seem to be the big thing here. Um, so much as you would expect from other towns of this size. Who funded the new buildings here? Um, I think the mayor was kind of the driving force behind that. Mayor, who's, uh... His son was one of the victims, yes? Oh, you've heard about that. Yes, it was... It was very sad. His son was. They've been in... Been in a right sort since that's happened. Where does he live? He lives? Um... Well... The Davies, um... Specifically, you might find his house. Uh, he actually doesn't live too far from, um, like... The town center, if you will, a town hall, um, where he works. You might have better luck going directly to the hall, though. Thank you. Of course. Oh, which hall would, were they speaking into? What kind of hall is it? Oh, it's like a town hall, city hall, for lack of a better term. Uh, after they finish this conversation, um... Not to be rude, Mrs. Shaw, but is there a Mr. Shaw around? Um, he hasn't been for some years, I'm sad to say. No, um, favor, if we have to go to this hall, I don't, uh, this coat's kind of old. Is there a <laughs> coat that I can borrow that and, perhaps? And she starts nodding her head. Yes, I do still have some of his, and there's better use, uh, than what I currently have. And she goes over, you do see that there's a small, well, not small, it's actually a fairly substantial size wooden chest. She opens it, there seems to be a lot of um, old shirts, pants, jackets in here, um, and some small trinkets. And she takes one out, she kind of uh, fluffs it off to the side. <laughs> it hasn't been worn in many years. And she kind of, this should work. And she hands over like a nice blue coat. All right, no 
no sentimental value here, right? I just want to make sure I'm not intruding. Uh, it, I feel that he would be more upset if I were to deny someone its use. Much appreciated. And I'm gonna just fold it over my arm because I don't want to quite wear it yet. Um, yeah. Ooh. I do have one last question, madam. Oh, yes. Is there anybody in town who keeps uh, sheep or goats? Sheep? Uh, yes, you could go to one of the farms, actually. Um, the Nightingale Farm. Lewis family runs it. They have goats, pigs, uh, cows over there. Aye. Could you point me in that direction? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, she goes over to the front door, opens it once more, and she starts pointing over just to the uh, southwest side. It was a location you hadn't branched off towards quite yet, but you'd seen uh, from your current walk. Much obliged, madam. You've been a great help. Um, you wouldn't happen to know the origin of the name of the town, Wolford. Wolford? Last I knew it was a, a family name. A bit vain, but... It seems most cities are. Hmm. Right. Thank you very much. Lovely tea. Thank you. Before we also head out, I want to take a look around to see if she has like a knitting tin, which is like really a, a, a cookie tin. <laughs> um, if she has one of those, I'm going to keep that in my head and make sure to purchase one at some point to bring back to Mrs. Shaw. Amazing. You definitely see a prominent tin waiting Perfect. on like a little, uh, a small table with a lamp on it. Sweet. Jokes on you, there's actually cookies in this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 right. So she uh, escorts you all to the door. Um, although, Casper, you now have a very uh, annoying amount of cat fur that's on your pants. Um, what is the plan? Where are we heading next? I mean, assume the hall, because like we're supposed to go to the hall or speak to the mayor at some point. I don't know if the mayor's at the hall or whatever, but probably. Um, Valario's still going to push. He's going to push into the town, but he's going to try and find Rose again and see if she he can still try and find out any new or different information about the town while everybody else speaks with the mayor. You're still um, As we're going to the mayor, Eleanor is going to kind of ask Casper to show her the, the coat. And if he does, um, sorry. Um, do you mind if I take a look at that? Court. Oh, sure, no problem. And I um, hand it over. And she just kind of looks it over and just kind of takes a look at it, makes sure there's no holes or anything. Um, and if there are any damages, she'll just be like, oh, um, bring it by my room tonight and I'll uh, patch them and make sure it's ship shape for you tomorrow. Oh, uh, much appreciated. Can I also this one too? If, oh, I mean, of course, of course. Whatever you can do. Um, this is my favorite one. It's the only. Um, it's one of the last things that I remember from a long time ago. So, of course, you know, my my grandchildren are getting older, and uh, hands aren't as busy as they used to be. Oh yes, I um, you know seeing Mrs. Shaw back there. You know, as we get older, it gets a little bit more lonelier, so I'm gonna make sure to also bring her back some butter cookies that, um, you know, fill up the tin. Hmm. Do you have children of your own, Mr. Crab? No, never. Um, well, I just try and take care of um, all the young all the young children I come across, um, the ones mm. in destitute and, and uh, trying to make their way, so I don't know. I think that's how I got into all of this work. Um, you know, 
just uh, helping out here, there, and then fell into all of this, so. You know, you remind me of someone very close to me, um, Natalia. She was um, very close to me, and uh, I think you would have gotten along very well with each other. I think so, too. Wow. She also had a bad habit of smoking. As you're doing that, I'm actually rolling a cigarette. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I don't have, uh, sometimes it helps my mind be preoccupied to not think about, um, you know, where pain, sadness, uh, things of that sort. We all have our vices. That we do. And I'm just gonna keep, like, uh, walking beside, alongside. Yeah, you know. I imagine we were on our way, kind of yeah. chatting on the way there. Perfect. And so, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the party is essentially heading over to the town hall. Um, the only exception is Valeria. Once Rose has shown you there, you're gonna try to, uh, get a bit more sights about the town? Okay. Yeah, especially the church any like new stories about the new church that's been built perfect that sounds good we will get to that um for ex for the sake of uh, expediting this a little bit uh the group is taken to the town hall um those that are staying are introduced to um the mayor upon uh inquiring and maybe even mentioning that you were sent from the Rose House, you are uh, introduced to William Davies, the current mayor, long-standing mayor. And he uh, does have an office that you're able to join him in. So, thank you all for coming. Um, I appreciate you getting here so soon. I, I thought it would take a little bit longer, but um, please, I... Uh, I, I know I wrote a bit to to the Rose House about what's been going on, but um, I assume you may want more information. Of course, anything you can offer us. Um, so he has a very uh, solemn look about him. You could tell he's being cordial, being very polite and welcoming, but he seems like he's a very tired man. Um, he's saying, we've had a two deaths recently that are um not not normal deaths not natural causes um uh, first was about two weeks ago um uh, mr oliver jacobson um he was a young man in town um a uh, leather worker by trade um we his body was found unfortunately um just to the uh, uh, the southeast area, um, within the woods, and he appeared to be uh, from the description that was given to me uh, torn, for lack of a better word. At first, uh, one of my men thought it would it looked like uh, almost like he was uh, stabbed in one area and then exposed. Um, the second was, um, Mason Davies, my, my son, uh, just a little bit less than a week ago. And he was further into the forest, um, actually across, uh, across Hollow Creek. And unfortunately, similar is, uh, his throat was, uh, was missing, if you will. Can I look at the mayor while he's talking about his son and kind of just see what I can... Absolutely. Go ahead and make an observation check. Oh, that's uh, two successes. Two successes. Um... Is this like a general vibe check? Are you trying to search for something? Yeah, like how's how's he feeling? Like, um, his I don't know. Voice, whatever I can. Believe. Yeah. When he was saying, uh, 
Mason Davies. It started very strong, and then his voice started cracking. He appeared to be a uh, his trying to hold back tears as he was describing this. So he seems it's genuinely very hurt. sad. Okay. Yes. If his hand is anywhere within reach at that moment, I'm just gonna put my hand on top of it. And one right hand on his desk as you grab it, he kind of um, clutches his fist in a small smile. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, um, there's been, uh, rumors flying about, as one, <laughs> as it does, it seems, especially amongst, uh, our younger residents, um, about a, a beast that's been, um, killing off some of our livestock as well. I, I don't know if it's necessarily related, but that was the reason Mason went into, a uh, into the woods. He was blinded by ambition and trying to, uh, solve a problem for me. Do you have a description of this beast? Beast, um, I think I'd heard large, um, uh, four legs, almost like a, uh, imagine a, a wolf, but bigger. Um, but again, it's, uh, kind of common for our livestock to be lost occasionally. Mm. Uh, who says they have seen this thing? I feel like there was a, um, oh, my, uh, my youngest son, uh, had mentioned seeing large shadows, um, Noah, and, uh, some men in the hunter's hall, they, uh, of course they're gonna be talking about the largest wolves that they can possibly find. When did the beast first start appearing? This beast that was killing livestock? We've had livestock decks going on for probably about three weeks, just shy of a month at this point. Before Plus, the first killing or after? Before. Does anyone know when the last full moon was? Full oh, moon? Um... I think there was one maybe over a week ago? Nine days? If I had to guess? Anything ch changed? These strange occurrences often come as a result of changes encroaching people's homes. The creatures of the forest are very territorial. Has anyone been venturing further into the forest or? Cutting down trees they shouldn't have. Well, we're not, um... We, we don't have a mill in this town. Um, surprisingly, that's a, a plan for us, but... Aside from some of the new expansion, I'm sure you've seen some of the buildings, um... That's, that's been in the works for over a year now. This is... The activity, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hazard that we've had anything more in terms of our, uh, our men venturing into the forest. No more than normal, at least. Hmm. And there has been new construction lately, no? It, yeah, it was, uh, about a year ago. What 
where did the funding for that come from? He smiles a little bit, rubs his head. Uh, my family put a lot of money into it and uh, some contacts we've had with uh, family friends were willing to help. Looking at this man and the clothes that he's wearing, he definitely appears as though he's well off. I was going to say, at some point, uh, I'm going to look around the rooms for any, like, easy pickings. If, uh, <laughs> you know, if he's like, if he's doing like the, I'm the mayor, I'm going to look out my window to be powerful and speak with my back towards you. Uh, so I'm... I'm going to take something if like no one else is in the room with us. Like I don't care if the rest of the party sees me, but I'm gonna I am gonna take something of value probably. Um, at this point, he's been a bit more uh, facing you in the discussion. Yeah, sure. Okay, fair enough. So, not quite yet up and looking away from the party. If that changes, I will let you know. Thanks. You're welcome. When he talks about where his money comes from, I'd like to see if there's any signs of deception. Oh, of course. Go ahead and make an observation check. Uh, two plus five. Yes, one success. Doesn't appear to be hiding anything. Hmm. Okay. Is there anything else I can provide? Guidance on. Where is your younger son? Oh, Noah. He's he's probably back at the house at this hour, and he kind of looks over at a clock. I guess he's probably home. Um, if you'd like, uh, my house. Uh, he takes out a piece of paper, writes down an address, and hands it over. You're more than more than welcome to go and say hello. Uh, I'll take it. Does anyone else have any questions for the dear mayor? This has never happened before, correct? In your town's history, there's never been a violent attack like this before? Not as long as I've been mayor, there hasn't. Magnus just nods. And how long, how long have you been mayor? Fifteen years, almost sixteen. I think in two months. Would you happen to know where the origins of the name of the town are from? You're muted. Wolford was a family name. Um... Some of the earlier, uh, earlier residents of this area, they branched off from a neighboring town. It was off to um, off to the southwest of us, on the opposite side of Hollow Creek, probably six hours travel. I see. And um, where is this family now? Uh, um, unfortunately, uh, the names died at this point. But there are descendants of this family, I'm sure. I would imagine there may be, but not in the town anymore. Last I heard was an Ophelia who uh, didn't have children. But she was old when I was a boy, so... Hmm. Right. find out what your boy saw. Of course, of course. And he uh, stands up and uh, goes to open the door for everyone on the way out. Um, as he's opening the door, he kind of makes a note of the time and says, man, day is flying by. Um, Noah should be home right now, knowing him. Um, if he isn't, you can come back and see me, but he's a creature of habit. And 
now having the uh, note in hand with the address, you find it's maybe not even three minutes away from you are kind of following notations of roads. Um, you do come to this like very nice house, two stories, um, very ornate styling to it. And right for pickings, potentially, I'm seeing those hand motions. Um, everyone's able to uh, get there. It actually does appear as though this entire like day has gone by somewhat quickly. You spent a good amount of time with Rose, with tracking, speaking uh, with the mayor. You're looking it's possibly like mid-afternoon at this point. So you go up and uh, knock on the door. At, it's open shortly after and you see um, a young man standing in front of you. Um, almost looks like a uh, spitting image of the mayor. Um, Hi, how, how can I help you? Noah. Uh, Noah Davies, I presume. Yes, uh, that you have the right house. Um, uh, who are you? You're sent by your father. He said that you had some information that could help us. Information? Um, well, I guess if dad sent you and he uh, gestures in, you're able to walk into the residence if you do choose to. Um, I will say at that moment, I guess you do have some manners. And <laughs> walk in to yeah. kind of throw him to kind of throw him a back a foot, you know, not physically, but emotionally, so that maybe I could pluck something while he's not looking. Emotionally not thrown. Emotional okay. damage before stealing. Emotional damage, got it. Um, as the party joins in, I kind of uh, looks a little confused by the statement, but otherwise fine. Um, you're able to enter into the house. It's very nice. The construction on the outside is very much indicative of the decor that you see on the inside. Um, and he looks to you all. Um, I, I guess information? How? What kind of information? Oh, um, about these, um, disappearances. Um, you, you mean, you mean the murders? Yes, I was trying to be a little bit kinder oh. with my words. Understood. Um, yeah, uh, I guess it's there's been there's been two so far. Um, Magnus sort of jumps in and cuts them off. Oh, I heard that you've seen the beast. That's why we're here. I, I, yeah, I've, I, I've, not the beast directly, but I saw really big shadows one night when I was out. Where? Strange shadows. Oh, near the, uh, um, uh, southwest area. Hmm. Just before the tree line. Over by the farm? Yeah, in that general area. Hi. Well, um, I guess if you're not gonna make a cup, I'll go and help myself. <laughs> and I'll just go walk and start a kettle, but also peep some stuff. I'm a, I will do this later if I have to steal something later, but that's, mm -hmm. that's um, what I'm doing. Two sugars, miss, Mr. Uh, Krebs. Uh, of course. Got you. These shadows, did they make any sounds or say anything? Uh, I, I think I heard like kind of rustling, like 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 foot footsteps, but no words. What were you doing before uh, you saw them? Um, I'd just been out um out for a drink that night walking around you know I'm trying to explain my reasoning for being out so late before I had to listen to the old man were you with your brother the day he was killed the, the day he was killed yeah I'd seen him earlier in the day and? And it was 
a day, he was talking <laughs> crazy talk about wanting to go find something in the woods and thinking he's just able to handle anything. What did he want to find? He's trying to find that beast. It keeps killing off half of our livestock, it seems, and it's just causing a problem. I, my dad was getting really frustrated about it, and he's had to be, you know, a fixer. How did he go about finding the beast? I wasn't with him that night, so your guess is as good as mine. Did your brother live here? Yeah. Would you mind showing me to his room? His eyes kind of narrow a little bit. I, 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 I guess. Um, and he'll start walking down a hallway um, and stop at a door and open it for you. Just kind of grab him by the forearm before going through. We're here to help. Well, this is, um, this is, uh, Mason's room. We've picked up a couple things, but there's still stuff in there. So if you enter in, you see a very well-kept room. Um, there's a large bed, there's some small side tables, a small desk off to one side, um, and a very nice, uh, cabinetry as well. Can I look through it with pierogi, kind of sniffing, sniffing things out? Of course. Um, is there something specific you're looking for? Clues! <laughs> Clues. <laughs> Go make an investigation check. Uh, two successes. No, wait, three. I can count. Oh, you're muted. Thank you. Um, while the search is taking place, is there anything else that anyone else is doing in the room? Yeah. Um, I would like to sit down at the desk, okay. pull out my notebook, and flip it to an empty page. Let my mind go blank and uh, do a little bit of automatic writing amazing um, could you remind me automatic writing yeah uh, when channeling spirits through automatic writing you can use inspiration to gain clues uh, the BM master provides more or less vague clues, predictions about the future, or momentary insights into the thoughts and experiences of your enemies extra successes reveal more clues on the failure the game master decides whether you suffer a condition, become possessed, or undergo a personality change. You decide what kind. It lasts for 1d6 hours. Okay. Use it once per session. Yep. Go ahead. And this is going to be your one time for investigation, like this entire investigation. Are you okay with that? The whole, so okay, got it. Yes, yeah. the entire investigation. Yeah, so what I'm looking for is a clue as to what this is. Um, where to find it, uh, or what is motivating it. Okay, uh, go ahead and make the relevant check that was described in automatic writing. Inspiration. Inspiration, okay. So, three, five, five, eight. Uh, can I take a swig of whiskey before I start to get another point for inspiration? <laughs> yes, I like that. Hell yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was like, wait, do my writing utensils give me help me for this? But no, it's investigation, not inspiration. Okay. Here we go. Nothing. Nothing? Zero okay. successes with an okay. eight. Five. So, the option for the Game Master is condition, possession, 
or personality change, correct? That lasts for 1d6 hours. Yes. 1d6 hours. Okay, roll that d6. Uh -huh. Can I push that roll? Yes, I will I let you push the roll just I as a... I forgot that was a mechanic for this game. Yeah, so you can push the roll. I just, as a uh, heads up, by pushing a roll, you will automatically suffer a condition. If you fail this once more, you may suffer two conditions. Um... But you totally can. Let's go! Do it! Doing let's it. go! That's amazing. Any game with yep. push mechanics, I use them too much. <laughs> 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 Alright, so that's another... Eight, nine, die. Two, four, seven, nine. Yeah. That's at least one six on here. Come on. Okay. Oh, two, two successes. Okay. Awesome. Can I apologize? I know you've just read it. Can you read me what happens on a success? So I don't uh, The game master provides more or less vague clues predictions about the future, or momentary insights into the thoughts and experiences of your enemies. Ooh, okay. So, what I'm going to say is, while the searching is happening around you, you may hear some light conversation, everything goes dark. Your vision becomes clouded. You close your eyes instinctively, noticing as you're opening them, it makes no difference. You start hearing wind around you. You're feeling as though you're angry. You, your eyes instinctively blink and you see a very small image of a, of a mangled goat. You feel anger burning inside you once more. You start blinking a bit more rapidly, your, your breath becoming much heavier, much, for, much more forced than it was. And you're seeing a figure of a man with a rifle. He appears to be walking, attempting to be slow, and he gets closer and closer, but not because he's moving towards you, but because you are moving towards him. You feel your hands, they feel different, but then you feel warmth in them and you feel liquid. You feel rushing down your arm and you see the body drop. And then a snap, you're hearing the conversation around you again. You all right, Miss Easton? Um, if you look over at Eleanor, you would see uh, that she has literally just not been looking down at the page, just hand on text, and has just been writing a kind of blank stare. Um, and the words on the page are like exactly as described. Now, Miss Easton, because while there was success there, you do suffer a condition from pushing the roll. With this one, I am going to say that you are feeling, I'm going to say this is a mental condition, given the state. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say right now, just like that rage that you felt, you feel angry. I, it's none of your business, Mr. Magnus. Pardon, I meant no offense. Close her book. I sort of shoot a glance at everyone else in the room. And while the room is unnervingly quiet for a moment, I do want to jump back over to uh, Valario as he was having conversation with Rose um, and going around the town being shown a bit more in depth of the layout. Valaria, I would say she's easily done maybe three laps through the town, just talking your ear off about stuff. You've become very familiar with the town's layout at this point. While you maybe haven't gone into locations, you have a much stronger sense of where everything is than your party probably does. Um, so that may be useful for you. Um, is there anything in particular that you are asking her at this time? Um particularly about any of the uh, the two people who had died if they if they had been found in the same areas or were they drastically apart from each other um, I'm trying to get a feel on what information the public has 
understand. Of everything. Um, you would get the sense that either the public hasn't been given incredibly like specific information, or Rose may just not be in the loop. She does say that she believes they were like in the woods, so she's been a little bit hesitant of going into forested areas without someone present with her. But she is also just kind of uncomfortable in nature in general and prefers being in town. Um, and then about the church, have there uh, were the funerals held at the church or were they private events like only the family did at like family homes or things of that nature? Um, or what involvement that the new church in the area might have with everything going on. She would tell you that both of the uh, both the families were members of the church and uh, funerals and services did take place there. Okay. Um, kind of nod to her and tell her, well, I don't want to keep your entire day off. I appreciate everything you've done for me today. Um, I think I'll spend a, a little bit of time inside the church but I would love to have a drink with you either today or tomorrow, if you would like. Uh, you see her facial expression get, like her eyes get a little eye. She's like, yeah, that would, that would be nice. Um, um, yeah, that would, that would be great. I completely understand. Um, it actually is getting pretty late right now, but, um, I'd love to maybe get a drink tomorrow. Absolutely. I appreciate all your help today, Madam Rose. And just kind of give a small <laughs> bow. And uh, she smiles and kind of points and says, well, the church is right there if you'd like to go. Um, otherwise, uh, I, I should be getting home. But um, if you need anything at all, um, I, I should be in town tomorrow. I will let you know. I look forward to our drink. And then he'll wait for her to step off, drop all form of emotion. <laughs> on his face and step immediately into the church um looking for any of the markings magics anything like that the stuff that he specifically had been researching about this place and the possible boss that would be here that's what he's looking for so as you enter into the church um you see that uh it's a pretty nice entryway the brick is uh definitely well crafted this was done by experts of their trade and as you enter the door creaks open you see that there's a couple people that are in they seem to just be uh, sitting in some of the pews uh, some speaking with one another and you do see a, a man uh, that you would definitely notice it in spiritual regalia he stands up and he can, nods at you and uh, raises a hand Raise um, starts walking right. forward <laughs> hello uh, I apologize I you must be new uh, yeah. Father Morris, and he extends a hand. Uh, placing the cane under his arm, reach a hand out. Valario, I'm here from quite a bit away. I'm here working, collecting stories, information about what has recently occurred in the area. Do you have some time, Father? Uh, I, I always have time for those who enter the church. Um, please, uh, is this a... And he kind of looks at the individuals who are sitting in the pews, um, and his tone gets a little bit lower. Uh, given the content, is this a matter better spoken in private? I believe so. And with a slight nod, he does lead you off into a, a small side room, modest table and chairs there. You see there's a bookshelf filled to the brim with books um, of all kinds, but of course, mainly spiritual in nature. Let um, me just sit down. Um, say, uh, how can I, how can I be of help in this? Uh, Valerio will take the same small notebook out that he's been keeping notes in. Um, I understand that the funeral, funerals (plural) for the unfortunate um, were held here. Was there anything noted as out of the ordinary? with the presentation or what you had seen had occurred to them. Um, I apologize, you mean in the manner of death that was definitely unusual? 
Yeah, anything. The manner of death, the appearance of the people, the way the body may have reacted, the way the person may have reacted to being presented here on hollowed ground. Um, I am a collector of stories, of instances and incidents. Um, and I'm working alongside the mayor here with a group of other investigators. Oh, with, with the mayor, you said? Yes. Um, well, the, the, uh, funerals themselves and services were, well, the death different, um, about as normal as a session could go. Many people attended, it was a tragic event, but I feel that their spirits and their souls would have been thankful for how it was handled. Was there anyone who seemed to leave abruptly, almost midway, or in the early portions of the services? for either of those who had passed? Uh, no, we didn't have anyone leave. Uh, last question here, Father, bef so that you can keep to those who require much more of your time. Um, has there been any new members to this town that were shunned, kind of alienated for a, a period of time uh, and then were very recently accepted or uh, came into points of power or wealth. He looks a little confused, but just none of that, that come to mind, no. Okay. There are sometimes situations where things can be made to be accidents in order to help the movement through social status or, or presentations. And I just wanted to be certain that it wasn't a situation like that, that there were people who had planned to hurt these people in order to be better accepted in the places that they're in, um, continue taking notes. And then once the, uh, after that small bit of conversation, uh, Valeria will stand up and just kind of give a, soft bow towards the father uh, I believe that is everything that I will need for the day I will be staying at the inn uh, here in town if anything comes to mind anything that may have slipped your your mind on either of those situations I would greatly appreciate the information um, yes of course thank you Um, if, if anything comes to mind I, I will reach out thank you you have a wonderful day, Father. And walk through the the church. Again, as soon as leaving the office, all personality disappears and is just keeping an eye on the people who are in there. Does anybody look worried about me being there? Or um, like they're keeping an eye on me? Go and make an observation check. Worst thing to roll. <laughs> I'm gonna do it I had to kind of laugh. I'm like, I know your empathy. <laughs> I got two dice. And nothing. Nothing? Okay. The people there don't really seem to be paying attention. Went glanced over when they heard the door open, but otherwise, okay. nothing that comes to mind. And Valerio will just make his way back towards the the last place he was at with the group uh, and wait for them to come out of the mayor's home with the notes and information he has. Understood. So now we'll adjust back to the rest of the party. Valerio, at this hour, you're standing outside kind of looking, knowing this is the last place that you'd seen them. It's starting to get towards sunset at this point. Um, you notice that there's a woman who leaves and she is closing the door and locking it behind her and checking the lock. But um, the rest of the party, you there's almost like this deafening silence when over the room is Eleanor uh, somewhat snapped at Magnus. Quick question about the vision. 
Did the man look like the mayor? He did. Okay. And was I able to see my body at all? No. No. Did I find anything in the room? Thank you so much, Masha. Um, <laughs> so, well, there was a success, right? Or multiple successes? Uh, three. Yeah. Three successes. Okay, as you were going through the room and trying to find anything that may lend, like, an idea of what was happening, um, you do find a couple of um, what appear to be love notes, but wholly unrelated, um, but stuff that had been saved in a uh, slightly uh, more obscure drawer. You are going through and you notice that there are... Um, there are areas that, as a hunter, you're familiar with um, kind of how people will keep uh, keep their belongings. Um, and it appears as though there was a very, like, nice indentation of what you would assume on, um, uh, on this area is uh, where one would keep, like, ammo, hunting gear, hunting rifle. There's some stuff that's there, but some stuff is missing. It's like, there's missing ammo, there's one gun, but you feel like the ammo doesn't match. Can I tell what kind of gun it is? Yes. So what you're seeing currently is a uh, a small like revolver. Um, the ammo that's there is definitely for a larger gun, something similar to yours or Magnus's hunting rifles. And um, who are the love notes to? <laughs> um, a young woman named Elizabeth. Cool. Do I recognize that location that uh, the man was killed at? I don't know. So while you're, um, your actual adventuring into like the woods has been fairly minimal so far, aside from that small circle that you've seen, um, you did notice it's definitely an area of, like, there were more trees around him, but the vision was so sparse and more focused on him, he didn't recognize the exact location. Well, if we are done here, I'd like to go get some dinner. Real quick, what kind of ammo was was there, if it didn't match the revolver? Oh, it definitely looked like something you would be using in a like large rifle. Oh, okay, okay. I, as a game master, am not too familiar with the ammo, sorry. But I imagine the two are different. Yes, you're good. That's all you need to know. My dad was so disappointed. <laughs> I am going to go outside and uh, kind of stomp off. Um, follow at a distance. And kind of lean my back against whatever is a possible thing that I can lean against. Uh, pull out my flask and just take a big old drink. And then crouch down, just start kind of petting Sniffles. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna wait for Maja to leave and leave with Maja. Um, also, I was going to steal some stuff, but I figured we can do that next session, figure out what I stole. Sounds good. We can revisit. But I would say if you are exiting the uh, mayor's residence, which isn't too far away from where Valeria is currently standing, um, there would be a reconnection for the group as you're heading back into town um the son as well would have mentioned uh if you'd said you wanted dinner there's there's a restaurant as well um the willow so it'll give rough directions to where you can find that restaurant 
Uh, I don't know if I can eat at that restaurant. That might be uh, a little over me. Uh, I uh, slip a pouch uh, out and I plop it in Casper's hands. I say, I'm not much for restaurant food anyway. I think I'll go find myself something to eat out there. Oh, um, I wasn't implying all I was just saying was that, uh, Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and I make eye contact, uh, with Valerio and I say, It's all right if I leave my post for a bit. And Valerio will start making his way over towards Madame Easton. And with that, I will, uh, head towards the woods. Okay. Now, Magnus, could you make a... Uh, I'll have you a Vigilance check. Yes, that is... Two successes. Okay. So, there's been, like, this uh, unsettling feeling that you've been having ever since uh, you arrived in Wolford. Um, a familiar calling, um, a, a longing uh, to to reunite with the woods that you're familiar with. And as you start walking, um, you're feeling like a pull. Would you choose to follow that pull? Yes. Okay. It's leading you towards the south end of town. As you're walking past some of the buildings, shops appear to be closed. Some children are running by as their moms are yelling to them to get inside and several minutes down the line you get to a small area that is interrupted by a creek there's been references to this hollow creek you would assume this being the only sign of a uh, water passing through that that would be the reference to it and you see what was at one point a maybe somewhat maintained uh, rope bridge spanning the gap has fallen. But you're feeling a pull. The side opposite you, you feel like there's a calling from those woods. Would you follow it? I do. And I'm not afraid to wade in the water either, assuming it's shallow enough yeah it's surprisingly deep for a creek but not the strength of a rushing river that you've been in before as you start pushing through the water slowly deliberately um but still with a uh, slight resistance there's a downed tree that you're able to kind of grab onto one of the branches for as you feel like you're getting a little bit swept away the the tangling of some leaves in your hair and the uh, small sticks almost pressing against your scalp feel like familiar, familiar nails, familiar fingers as they trace down. You hear a slight splash behind you and you feel a familiar hand right around your throat as you begin turning your throat is ripped. It becomes black sight for you, and you hear a small laugh. But not not a laugh, not a menacing laugh, not, not one of evil or of uh, success, but you hear a child. A small child laughing. I uh, put my hand to my throat, trying to stop the bleeding and hang on. Um, the sort of pull uh, turning to panic. And I look around for the source of the laughter. The source of the laughter as you're holding at your throat and your, your eyesight is, is failing you. You've lost blood. You feel it pooling around you. And as you're breathing out, you realize that it doesn't sound like it was around you, but it was in your head. And as your body starts sinking and you think of a a last familiar set of eyes locking with yours. I gave it to her. 
and that's where we're going to end it. Thank you all for joining us ah! for the second session of Vesson. We officially have our first player death. Um, no! Yes, I I apologize, <laughs> but but thank you all for. Uh, I'm gonna hate myself. Stories. Uh, so this is gonna be fun. Um, we are gonna be back um, without Emily, unfortunately, um, two weeks from now. So that is going to be the 12th of February. Same time and place. Maybe a bit of a shorter session. Thank you all for uh, if you've stuck with us. I apologize it ran a little bit late. You, my players are amazing role players, and it's so hard to like not want to listen to them for hours on end. But uh, before we go ahead and say goodnight, I would like to have my players once more. We'll go around and just say where people can find you, what you're doing, self plugs. Like, please take this time for yourself. Let's start with Michael. Oh shit! Okay, here we go. I was sending you the notes for today's session. Um, <laughs> which there's like 238 lines it's txt file but there you go um it, it ends with what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so hello my name is michael sinclair the second i go by michael crits everywhere i'm a ttrpg prof professional ttrpg performer believe it or not um hungry <laughs> um but uh, you can catch me everywhere. Just look up Michael Kritz for my TTRPG stuff. And then also I'm a Magic the Gathering personality. Uh, tomorrow I'll be streaming. So, um, and I also have like, if you look up uh, Michael Kritz for MTG content, you'll find a whole bunch of stuff uh, like game nights and tabletop jocks and such. Um, but I'll be doing a tournament tomorrow and in between tournament or after tournament, we'll be watching some social education videos about like, uh you know society and trying to be progressive and all the other great stuff and you can hear color commentary from me and also i'll probably make a whole bunch of jokes that will have you rolling in your seat so there you go that's me amazing thank you michael let's go over to Bo. hi i'm Bo, and i i play i was playing eleanor easton uh who's gonna hate herself next time um but if you want more of me you can definitely find me all over the internet as a dorky teacher except for on twitch where it is just dorky teacher uh next week you can find me over on media flares channel where i am playing myself in a game of dnd fifth edition uh where i have been jumanji into the game have died once got brought back to life almost died again it's a whole thing uh, you can find me on my own Twitch channel uh, on Tuesday for a game of Prey. Uh, Wednesday, we are continuing um, with Divinity Original Sin 2. Thursday, uh, I play games with friends. Right now, we're playing Deep Rock Galactic with uh, Bright Dystopia and Slumber Jane. And um, that's kind of it for right now. Also, next session is going to be my birthday, so that's going to be exciting. Yes, it's going to be a birthday session. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us for that. When you mentioned it was going to be your birthday, I was like, oh, and you're going to be spending it with us? I might so do honored. like a whole day streaming thing for my birthday. Amazing. Okay, well, we're going to have to watch you and then watch you here. So, <laughs> perfect. But next up, I want to go over to Jazz. Uh, I don't have much going on. <laughs> I have an Instagram at Bugbear Hug, and that's it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, uh, Will. Oh my god. Um, hi, I'm Will. I'm the lore keeper over at Arclight Court. You can find me on Instagram at Arclight Court. You can find me on Twitch at Arclight Court. I do a lot of tabletop role-playing game creating, as well as homebrew content creating across all tabletop role-playing games. Uh, you can find me here on the Initiative Order for many projects. Um, my heart hurts um <laughs> but i can't wait for this next session and last but certainly not least emily hello everyone <laughs> uh i've been emily uh you can find me 
on Twitter and Instagram at Emily Irv. Um, I'm the executive producer and a host on 20 Side Stories. I am a cast member on Second Star of the Right with Brie and Michael, uh, and a cast member on The Forge Academy with Michael as well. Um, I forgot that not everybody knew that this was going down this way this evening. I want you all to know that this was a consensual kill. Um, I am not available two weeks from now. Uh, so Brie made the most of it, um, as she does. So thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure and I can't wait to see what you all get up to. I, I knew and I, it, I was in, I enjoyed watching people suffer. It was a good time. <laughs> Speaking of suffering, um, hello, it is I, those who make others suffer. Uh, my name is Brianna. You can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Brianna Flame. Um, I am most of the time here on the Initiative Order. I'm a channel organizer um, and occasionally a game master for sessions like this. Um, I'm also, of course, a cast member on Second Star to the Right with both Michael and Emily. Um, but most importantly, I am just so proud to be the game master for an incredible group of players like this. So thank you all for joining me. I am so excited for two weeks from now, even though we will be down not having Emily or Magnus after all that awesome role play. I'm excited to see what you all do. So thank you viewers for joining us and we'll see you next time. <laughs>